They all look horrific, don't they? Their fur is in patches and tatty or even non-existent. Oh my God. This poor thing, what wow. happened to her? Hi, sweetheart. Yeah. We have virtually no history on this dog whatsoever, so we have to piece it together ourselves. So you're gonna do a full exam for me, tell me all the issues that you find and how best we're gonna treat them. So I've just had a call from Sonia, who's one of the incredible people that work for one of my favorite charities, All Dogs Matter. They help to rescue and rehome abandoned dogs here in London. And they've just let me know of four dogs that have just come into their shelter that are in a really terrible state. Hi Scott, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. So here you've got a full house, four yes, dogs? Yes, we've got four little dogs. We've wow. got two Pomeranians, we've got Dalmatian, wow. and we've got Jack Russell, all with really bad skin conditions. So okay. if you could have a look at them all. Absolutely, lead the way. Hello. Hello, you four. Oh, you're a Motley crew. <laughs> no Hello. Hello. Hi, baby. Hello, you. So they were all found together. Right. They were found in a lady's garden. My first impressions are these dogs are clearly neglected. They're just in an awful way. They're all quite thin, but what really strikes me is that they've all got skin problems and there's masses of hair lost. They all look horrific, don't they? Their fur is in patches and tatty or even non-existent. I'm a little bit worried about this little pom though. I do think we need to have a little look at her and see what's, see what's going on. Okay. Come on. Hello. Hello everyone. It was very clear from the get-go that the Pomeranian was the one that was struggling the most. Hello you. Can I see you? She's the one that's lost the most amount of fur. She looks in the worst condition. She's very thin. She's struggling. You can see well clearly the biggest problem here is her skin and the complete lack of hair. So this has been going on for a while. She's lost a huge amount of fur as a result. Who would let their dog turn into this. Get into I mean, it's stage. disgusting. It really shocks me to the core and to see a Pomeranian look like that, I just don't know how the people here do it and I don't know how their hearts don't break every day. She's also coming pregnant. Oh, you're joking. So, yes. And what happened to the puppy? The puppy didn't survive. The puppy wasn't even, it wasn't even a proper pup, so it wasn't even fully formed. And so, it's sick, yeah. isn't it? really upsets you, doesn't it, yeah. to see this? It's heartbreaking. Everyone gets, everyone gets upset. You can't help it. You wouldn't be human if you didn't get upset about something like that. Sorry. You're OK. We're going to sort you out. Hey, don't we? We're going to sort you out. Hey. It's all right. Oh, hello. Hello. Mm. Hey, wow, yeah. they're affectionate little ones, aren't they? It's incredible, isn't it, for four dogs that have Ooh. suffered so badly. They're very sweet and kind and nature. And still trusting. All right, well, what I think we need to do is all these guys look like their conditions are quite manageable, but this little one clearly needs my help. You sort of really wonder how and why this happens. Just so patchy, aren't you, sweetie? Gosh, look at that. It's non-existent coat, eh? eh? There's more skin than coat there, isn't there? Eh, there's little bandy legs are shown off by the fact you've got no fur on them. So you can see the amount of fur that she should have mm -hmm. in this patch there. Is this new fur that's coming through, do you mm, think? Could or is well this... be. I mean, it depends what the cause of the hair loss is. Will she get her fur back? I don't think she's lost fur for no reason. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we're going to find a reason here. Uh, and I think that reason could be anything from mange mites to hormonal conditions. Right. So I think okay. what we need to do is take it to the practice mm -hmm. and then just get to grips with what exactly is going on. So you're going to go with Scott. He's going to take care of you and you're going to come back. Well, you're going to find your referrer at home and you're going to be his stunner. She's going to be a beautiful little girl. Yeah. You are so lovely. Rest. What are we going to call this little lady? What do you think? I don't know, she's very tiny. She's so yeah. petite. Yeah. She's going to be beautiful. I reckon. Yeah. What are you Maybe thinking? Maybe we could call her 
Kylie. Kylie. Oh, nice Aussie name. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I thought you might like that one. I do. No, well, who, who can't like Kylie? Hey. Oh, gee yeah. whiz. You wish you'd be as good looking as Kylie. Yeah. Hey. Well, let's see what it's I can do. It's something to aspire to, isn't it? It is. It is. I'm not a miracle worker, but I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kylie. I like it. I think it. she's got potential. It's a hell of a namesake. Hey, it's lots to live Aww. up to. Well, she is so tiny and she's just yeah. gorgeous petite, isn't she? She is. She is. She should have a lovely little pretty name. And... Yeah. You've certainly got a perfect personality. Hey? Hasn't she? Yeah. The hey. sweetest little girl. All right then, cutie. Hey, do you want a little trip to Richmond? She's hey. really stolen my heart, this yeah, little one. She Say goodbye Aww. to Sonia. Bye bye, hey. darling. We all get quite attached to the dogs down here. Hey. We might only spend a few days with them, but we, you know, we love them all as if they're our own, really. Okay. I never understand how people can be cruel to animals. They're defenceless, innocent creatures. Why would you be mean to them? Why would you hurt them or neglect them? I just don't get it. Beautiful. Let's go and see everyone. Hi, Hi. Oh Hello. God, who's this? Wow. <laughs> I've just taken Carly back to the practice, and understandably, people are a little taken aback. She's a very friendly, sweet-natured dog, but wow, she makes a first impression. What's the matter with her? Well, it's a it's a long list of ailments that little Carly's got going on. I'm afraid. It's so sad. You're in good hands now, little one. Look at that little two. <laughs> Carly's not the only special guest that we've got at the practice today. We've also got our new vet graduate starting as well. Riaz, fresh out of vet school, he only graduated yesterday, and it'll be very interesting to see how he gets on. Hey, Riaz. Hey, Scott. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. How good are you? Good to see you again. Congrats How's on it? the graduation. Oh, cheers, pal. How'd it go? Oh, mate, it's amazing. Yeah? Five years, finally there. So, and here's our consult room. Oh, and it's Emma. Hi. Hello. This is our head nurse, Hi, Emma. Emma. Hi. Nice Riaz, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Riaz, How are you doing? Grad, fresh off the press. <laughs> How fresh are we talking? Oh, too fresh. Yeah, as in like a day fresh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Like yesterday. I'm glad the first person you met at the practice is our head nurse because I would say, as a new grad, the person that you want to be besties with yeah. is definitely the head nurse. So, head vet, but you call the shots. Yes. Pretty much. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we've established this hierarchy on day one. Get it right from the offset. From the very beginning. So, Brilliant. you, scrubs, you downstairs, and I'll bring the dog. I thought today that Kylie would really help to flex Riaz's veterinary muscles. So guys, meet Kylie. Oh my God. A baptism of fire to try and understand everything that's going wrong with this dog and what we can do to help her. This poor thing, what wow. happened to her? Hi, sweetheart. Yeah. Well, um, we have virtually no history on this dog whatsoever, so we have to piece it together yeah. ourselves. So you're gonna do a full exam for me, tell me all the issues that you find okay. and how best we're gonna treat them. Right, well, let's get started then. Look how much hair she's lost. You can see right through to her skin and you shouldn't really be able to do that at all. When Scott told me there was no history, it was literally like a nightmare. I was like, oh, can't I just have an easy vaccination or something to do? But I'm happy to, to do that, so bring it on. We're gonna start at the front of you, little girl, and work our way back, eh? Here, a little look inside. Oh, darling, you're missing quite a few teeth as well, aren't you? Oh. Skin's quite darker as well in patches. Yeah. She must be really itchy. This is clearly something which has, you know, not happened overnight. Checking these ears of yours. Oh, you've been scratching these ears a little bit, have you? The glamorous job of smelling dogs' ears as well. I was about to say, is this a diagnostic tool they teach you in veterinary school? It's one I've picked or? up myself. Nice. It's, 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 nice. it's, actually, it's actually something I enjoy. <laughs> Just have a quick little listen to her. Let's go, girl. Sounds fine on that side. My professor at university would be very annoyed if I didn't listen from both sides. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's watching. No, no, I've never seen anything like Kylie. I think she's the first and hopefully the last time I ever see anything like that. 
I mean, just looking at her tummy and her mammary glands here, she's clearly had puppies. Well, you'll be horrified to know that just two days ago she uh, had a stillbirth at the kennels. She didn't, okay. Yeah, well, everything oh. you've been through. Mm-mm. Yeah. It's not fair, is it? When I heard that she lost a puppy, I, I lost it myself. I broke down. I don't know if it's a maternal feeling, woman to woman, but the thought of losing your baby in a stillbirth, um, just, it just made me feel for her. It's just not fair. So, Dr. Riaz, what do you think? I think what we should find out first is the skin problem, whether it is a simple skin problem, whether it's just a parasite or something like that, or there's an underlying cause, perhaps. I think we should start with some skin scrapes. That's good, you've so, done this before? Yes, in training. Scraping the skin with a scalpel blade, it's not nice. But what we're trying to do is to try and pick up any evidence of mites. Lovely, that's great, good work. Good job. Good girl, honey. There's a couple of different types of mites that could potentially cause the amount of hair loss that we've seen in Kylie. And then we look under a microscope and see if we can see any of these little things. Where are you, little blighters? They're gonna be in here somewhere. So guys, um, no mites found on this microscope slide. So what are we gonna think about that? The fact that we haven't found it doesn't rule it out. So I think what we should do in the meantime is start treating for the mites and perhaps run an additional test to confirm the presence of it, something like a blood test. Sounds good. It seems to us that the biggest likelihood is that Kylie is suffering with mange and the best way to kill off a mange mite is by giving the dog a bath and start helping Kylie to recover and grow that fur back. Now you've got to give a dog a bath. Um, a very technical job. <laughs> I'm very qualified for it, let's do it. Riaz has done extremely well working up this patient. He has good understanding of the types of conditions that could lead to this poor little dog's problems and then the best way to treat it. We don't know yet if we're treating for which type of mange, so we're just gonna hit it hard. Let's go. So we're just gonna not get her face too much. This bath is not the nicest thing. We're dressed up in masks and gloves because it's pretty strong stuff. And poor girl, it's just stood there taking yeah. it. So what we'll do with the rest of it is just sponge it on a little bit. You get free tummy rubs, hey? <laughs> hey, gorgeous. So I think the important thing with this is that we just get a good coverage. The way this works is it will kill the bugs from the outside and hopefully make her feel a lot less itchy and she can start to grow some of this hair back. Absolutely. I can't wait to see her full of hair again. I know. If it is just some bugs on the surface, then we should start seeing some progress in the next few weeks with regards to her hair coming back. I never thought that I'd get such an interesting and a bit of bizarre case as I have today. And with me, your first nurse. That's true. How does it feel to take... No, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> your nursing virginity. <laughs> I can't wait to see her full of hair again. I bet she's gorgeous. I challenge the mites to survive oh. the white stuff. All right, loveling. I think we've doused you and bathed you enough. We're still awaiting the results of the test to see if there are any underlying conditions, but at this moment in time, I'm quite optimistic for Kylie. Bless her. Normally, dogs take so long to dry, but she's got no hair, so oh, she's bless dry you. already. Look at that. She thanks, Riaz. Thanks for day one. Bye, right, gorgeous. You're going <laughs> Go to sleep well, aren't you? <laughs> she's a little bit quirky looking at the minute, God love her. But everyone has just fallen in love with her. She's got the most expressive little face and a little tail, bald as it may be, doesn't stop wagging. And she's just stolen everyone's hearts, I think, today. Well, you'll feel better soon, I promise. You'll never forget your first sort of patient, regardless of what it is. I think I'll remember Kylie forever. All right, honey. Get you some dinner. Should I get you some dinner? Well done! Look at you! Well done! Hello, Sonia! What's up? Oh my God, Hi. Kylie! <laughs> How are you? I'm good. You look incredible! Doesn't she? She's an absolute vision, isn't she? She looks fantastic. Did you recognise her? Hardly! <laughs> well, first of all, she's got hair. Mm. <laughs> it's incredible! 
We were really concerned about Kylie. She was covered in fleas. Her skin was so bad. She was so undernourished, so underweight. Who would let their dog turn into this? Get into I mean, it's state. disgusting. She was quite a poorly little dog, and she's just come a really long way. Kylie is just loving the attention, and she deserves it. So I say, go, Kylie. <laughs> Hair She's on like, the look, face. look at me, look at me. Her Hair legs. on the legs. Hair on the tail. Look at that. Kylie looks absolutely amazing. I can't believe this is the same dog. She looks beautiful. You look amazing. Wow. She is a princess. Oh, you are. Let you me go. have a Who's look that? at you. Hello, beautiful. How are you? Mwah. Remember Scott? I think what the irony is here is that she had fox mange, mm. and now she looks like and a fox. And you look like a fox. <laughs> Don't you? You look like little foxy, hey? foxy Kylie. I hope that she's just going to be as happy as she is and have a lovely life with people that will love her and look after her, give her the love that she deserves. We adore her. I think Scott's fallen in love with her as well, so. Beautiful foxy Kylie. Yeah. Good girl. I'm driving out today to see Andy and Keely who run the Mayfield Alpacas Animal Park and recently they asked me to pop up to help with their Randy meerkat Nguvu. Now this time it's not meerkats or alpacas even that are causing the problems but a creature much more associated with Christmas. So I just hope that I can help. Good boy. Come on Elsa. Come on Svenny. Come on, good boy. There you go. Good lad. Hi, guys. Hiya. How are you yeah. doing? Hey, Keely, good to see you. Yeah, you too. Hey, Thank Andy, you. good to see you. Yeah, Merry Hi. Christmas. Merry Christmas. So, you've dragged me all the way back up to Yorkshire for reindeer. Mm -hmm. It's Christmas. Yep. Preparations need to be made. So, yep. tell me exactly what I'm doing today. And um, This is Sven, so he's our male reindeer. Um, and then we've got Elsa over there. But it's Sven that I really want you to look at today. Scott's here today to help us trim the feet of a reindeer. So our reindeer feet, they do continually grow, so sometimes they splay out and then they can crack, so Sven's feet are looking like they do need doing. He does need a Christmas pedicure, because he does have to look nice and sparkly, <laughs> ready for his crowd. <laughs> what an incredible festive thing to do as a vet, to trim the hooves of a reindeer. Sven's quite feisty, um, so... Yeah, I love his work cut out for him. <laughs> Let's just say they've got some Christmas spirit in them. Uh, we'll say that for the minimum. It looks like a pussycat. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah. I'm sure yeah, if elves can do it, good. you can do it. If elves can do it, yeah. I can do it. There <laughs> we go. Right, Kinley and Andy, you're playing it a bit cagey about how friendly or not the reindeer are. But look, it's Rudolph. What have I got to worry about? She'll keep him calmer. We'll say calm there. Yeah. <laughs> Sven and Elsa are really nice reindeers. They're Norwegian. They're coming up to two years old. Uh, they don't look very big, but they are very strong. Elsa is a little bit more nervous. She will come up and hand feed, but Sven has got a lot more fight in him. I think we should try you with Sven. Oh, He's the nice one, honestly. <laughs> Both the reindeer have got their long lines on, so all I need you to do, all I need to do, is uh, <laughs> go up to them, stand on the long line, and then just reel them in. Okay. So I like a big fish. And as an Aussie, you should be used to that. Right, sounds that so easy. Makes sense. Yeah, no, yeah. it sounds, sounds <laughs> yeah. very easy. And your experience is uh, as a vet nurse, is that right? Yes, that's right. Like every vet nurse <laughs> I know, very good at direction? Yeah, we're very good at giving instructions. So right. uh, that's what we are. Not bossy, just uh, yeah. we, we, we know what we want. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I'm ready to be instructed. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, always. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you just come through this way. Okay. Mind the rear. <laughs> Let's go, come on. <laughs> oh, and they're off already. Oh my goodness. Scott, I'll give you those. Oh yeah. Thanks, mate. Scott looks a little bit nervous. Come on, Sven. But Scott's a big Aussie guy. I'm sure that he can deal with the sort of power that's behind a small reindeer. 
It's nothing compared to a kangaroo or a great white shark, so I'm sure that, you know, that Aussie fight can come out. Oh, so close. So close. <laughs> we usually try and step on the lead rope and then reel them in from there. Scott's method seems to be diving on the lead rope. I was so close. Honestly, I had it. <laughs> not a method that we usually use and not one I've seen before. It's comedy for us. We quite enjoy watching it. <laughs> it is way harder than I thought it was going to be. I honestly thought that it would be a really gentle walk along, hold the rope, draw them in, give them a carrot. But no, these reindeer are fast. He's got her. Well done. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> I had mine. <laughs> I had her bloated a little bit too much, got a little bit too enthusiastic, and her lead rope snapped the actual head collar and she got away. Yeah, see, that's what happens when you show off. Definitely the reindeers are winning. <laughs> yeah, that made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right. no, I'm not giving up now. <laughs> Just a warning, they can jump six foot as well. <laughs> oh, my God. Scott's definitely getting a bit hot and sweaty and a little bit um, frustrated, I should think. Uh, he doesn't look like he's going to give up, though. <laughs> Come on, Sven. Crap, are you kidding? Oh, oh God. <laughs> he has contact. <laughs> oh, sh Not quite as good as an India. I was so close. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't look like he's going to give up, though. <laughs> Got him! Keep up, keep up, keep up, keep up. <laughs> Reel him in. Come on, mate. Oh, man. Come on, Sven. Come on. Keep nice and calm with him. Good and boy. just be careful as you get him close to you. The reindeers, they use their feet to kick and they also use their antlers to headbutt you as well. Come on, Sven. Come on now, buddy. Yeah, try and hold as close up to the head collar as possible and then keep to the side of him. Just okay, in so case. Actually, you try just... and grab his head collar? Uh, yeah. Just underneath him, where the buckle is. Okay. And then you should be able to start walking okay, him. Okay, Sven. That's it. Good boy. Good Perfect. Boy. And then so you're at the side of him, both hands on the lead rope. Good boy. There yeah. we go. Let's be friends. That's it, isn't it? Good boy. Oh, yeah. Come on. Go. Come on. I think the adrenaline's pumping in Scott. He is doing a good job. He's doing the right movements. He's talking to the reindeer. Come on. Come on. Let's behave nicely now. Come on. I think the competition's on now to see who can hold on to who. Whoa. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Calm down. Come on. Even though it does look a bit of a stressful experience, probably for all involved, not just the reindeer, it's something necessary they need doing. So as the feet do get longer and they do become splayed and cracked, that can cause infection and pain as well. So we try and do it as quickly and efficiently as possible, even if it does look a bit manic. Come on. Come on, Sanders waiting. Honestly, it is like trying to dance with a big, massive reindeer. He keeps spinning me round and round in circles. He's bucking. Come on, lad. Not much further. It's an absolute nightmare. It'll just be a bit of a dance on the way up there. <laughs> yeah. What kind but of you're dance not too is dizzy, it? Are you? <laughs> Come on. It's funny to watch someone else going through that. Usually, I'm the cannon fodder, but it's all practice. At least he'll have a good dancing skill at the end of it. <laughs> I'm not thinking it's ballroom, or if it is, it's really bad. <laughs> now I know how Santa feels, it's so exhausting. <laughs> nearly there. Come on, mate. We're nearly at the barn, and honestly, I can't wait to let go of the halter. <laughs> Come. Oh, okay, okay. All right, do you want to back in? Hey? 
Can you reverse park? Hey. Okay. Whoa! Made it. I'm absolutely exhilarated to get to the point where we've finally been able to release him and let the big guy go it was such a relief. You all right? <laughs> um, I've been reindeered. Rest <laughs> time. <laughs> Oh, God, that's so exhausting. How do you do that every Christmas? That is ridiculous. So we've got him up to the bar, so we'll leave him in the stable for a while, for at least an hour or so, just so he can chill out, have something to eat, and he's not too stressed. Um, if we went in there straight away to try and do his feet, I don't think he'd allow it, because it's been a bit of an experience getting him into the barn, so now we just need to let him be for a while. It'll be worth it, Sven. Sort your feet out. Good oh boy. Well. I think that's overstating it. <laughs> Good boy indeed. <laughs> Reindeers are feisty, plucky, uh, very powerful creatures. And yes, they're absolutely beautiful and a massive part of Christmas. But wow, I can understand why Santa gets so exhausted on Christmas Day. <laughs> it's not the presents, it's the reindeer. <laughs> After that, is Sven going to be on the naughty list? Possibly. He's a beautiful reindeer, but I think we need to spend some time apart. Right, see if he's a bit more relaxed about everything now. <laughs> Let's hope so. I am after that break, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. Hello, uh, mate. He actually looks a lot happier. He does, much Ooh, calmer, yeah. breathing much more slowly and relaxed. That's yeah. good. Pedicure of a reindeer. Mm. I'm getting nervous <laughs> again. He looks quite happy now. But I've learned my lesson from last time. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the plan, boss? Um, what we'll do is send Andy in, if you're happy doing that. Thanks. Send Lucky just one boy. of us in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if Andy can go in and pin him against the wall, um, then I'll get another member of staff to hold on to him as well, so there's two of them. Uh, and then we can get going trimming feet. We'll just try and do it without sedation first. Yeah, I think, think that would be, be nice. Yeah, quite a risky thing to use yeah. at the best of times. So let's try and see if we can do it without drugs, shall yeah. we, mate? Sedating reindeers can be a bit of a problem just because they seem to not need to take as much for the sedative to take effect. So we've got to be really careful not to overdose them. I am sending Andy in first. All right, fella. Shh, shh, shh. I know, I know. It does seem to like to go in there and get involved. This could potentially be quite a dangerous situation. Steady, steady. So, as always, I'm used as cannon fodder. I know, I know. We've got not only antlers. You've also got the ability for the animals to kick, not from just from the front, but from the back, and they're not like other animals. They can kick to the side, they can jump and act as they go for your face. Ah, no. It's definitely a hard task ahead. Luckily, Scott's right. on hand in order to try and uh, sedate him if we need it, but if we can do it without, that would be much better for the welfare of the animal. Just watch it back in. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going in. That's actually a really good position. <laughs> so I'm at the front pinning Sven at the minute and we've got Nick at the back. And at this point, all I'm concerned with is keeping the head down. Nick will keep his back end down and we should be safe. How you going there, Nick? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for any sort of movement. If the animal feels that you are relaxed in any way, shape or form, he'll take advantage of that and he'll jump up. What's so incredible, Keely, straight away I see, is he got four toes? Yeah, so they were uh, like snowshoes then. Yeah, um, so what, they sort the of snow. splay out on the snow? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Really good job. Huge. So this joint here clicks. Oh. And that click is a communication. People seem to think it's something wrong with the joints, but it's not. It's a communication between reindeer in the dark. If they can hear that click, and that click means there's another reindeer there, so it's safe, not a predator. Because so many people would think that it's just the hooves hitting the ground, but it's yeah. not, it's actually yeah. the ligaments yeah. in the joint. Oh, yeah. they think they've got a joint problem, and they haven't, that's normal for a reindeer. Wow. You heard it on a dog or a cat or a llama or an alpaca, you think that was something strange, yeah. but... <laughs> Learn something new every yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how much of this, I can feel it's very thin there. Reindeers in the natural environment will wear down their feet by walking on rocky surfaces. Ah, oh, here we go, mate. Yeah. When they're in a paddock, of course the hooves are going to continue to grow and that's why they need trimming. It is dead keratin, so it's not going to hurt, eh? Okay, mate. Happy that's with that? Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. 
Nice, although what I'm concerned about now is I've sharpened it up quite a lot for next time. <laughs> it's got points. <laughs> yeah, it's got points. So things are going really well at the moment. The feet are being clipped without too much problems. Sven is actually behaving himself. He's been really calm, he's been really still. A lot better than I thought he would be. I don't want to jinx anything at the moment, but he's looking really good. Yeah, we're expecting him to be this good, were we? Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, reindeer whispering is paying off, I think. What <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Being dragged around a field by a reindeer. If that class is whispering, then I'm very good at this. Okay, so Kili, how's my first Hey, uh, That's good, that, that is good, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> nice and smooth around, a lot shorter. Wow. Right with underneath. Maybe, yeah, I've, um, maybe I've missed my yeah. vocation. <laughs> <laughs> Reindeer nail clipping. <laughs> Nails by Dr. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Available only at Christmas. <laughs> All right, so that's one side of oh. our deer done. Scott's very good with Sven. I think they've had some reindeer whispering. They've done really well after the little bit of a to-do in the field. He seems to have got control of him, showing him who's boss. So he's going really well. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Try and get to a foot again. Good boy. Amazing. All right, let's get that extra toenail off you, mate. Good Don't let him fool you, though. No. <laughs> Good boy. Final foot, then we'll get you back to your girlfriend, Elsa, hey? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on. It's been really interesting to get to know reindeer today. I didn't know that they were as strong, as powerful, as feisty, but now I totally understand why Father Christmas chooses them to pull his sleigh. Okay, last one, and then we're done. I'm not convinced that I've got a friend for life with Sven. I think we have a healthy respect for each other, uh, but I don't know if we're gonna be great mates in the future. I love Christmas, so hopefully he'll take that into account. All right, there we go. One completed reindeer pedicure. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, that's pretty perfect. good. Yeah. I think Sven's going to have a really good Christmas now. His toenails, they look really nice. He'll be ready to step out at Christmas, greet his crowds. Good luck, Sven. Hey, I hope that Elsa's impressed with your new footwork. Have a good Christmas. <laughs>
I knew I'd taken on something that I might not be able to um, cope with. Let's go and say hello to the vet. What's this? Come on then, baby. Oh, good boy. So, Jess, what do we have on this afternoon? Oh, we've got Archie here today. Archie. He's a good boy, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's good. Have you met Archie before? No, I don't believe I have. OK. Yeah, he's a good boy. Have you got him out of the car before? No, I haven't. I think it'll be good for your training. OK, we'll yeah. see how that goes then. <laughs> it's definitely your turn. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Archie laid claim to the car. I think he must have lived in a car. It must have been his kennel, if you like, because he made it his own. Come on. And he didn't like other people, especially men, trying to get him out of the car. Hey, Archie. You all right? Hey. Oh. It's an overwhelming feeling of dread. <laughs> there's, there's a serious risk of losing an arm. Come on. I think we need to stop. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. okay. So Jess and I looked at each other and we said, do you know what? We admit defeat. It's time for Scott. Neither of us are that brave. Um, it's his practice, it's his arm. <laughs> hey, Peggy. I hear he's performing, is he? No, he's being lovely, Scott. Oh, really? You being a right old grump? Come on, then, you big wuss. When Jess and Ryan came in needing help, I, I wasn't surprised. Uh, it's not the first time and it certainly won't be the last. Archie loves the car and is more than happy to tell people to go away in dog speak. Come on. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Bad behaviour is not tolerated. Come on. Right. There we go. That was a bit naughty, wasn't it? Come on, ain't you old grump? Here we go. Come on. I first met Peggy and Archie in the clinic and straight away thought, this is an odd couple. Gee, he's walking like an old man in a young dog's body. Archie's a handful. There's no doubt about that. And it's not just the physical problems that he's got going on, but also the behavioural, the mental ones. But Peggy just wants to do the best for Archie, and I salute her for that. She's an absolute star. Peggy, I tell you what, I've never noticed Archie look quite that bad walking in. Has he really been struggling with walking of late? He has been, and it's been deteriorating, which is the reason I brought him in today. Yeah, bless him. And I tell you what, normally, when I've got him out of the car before, he's been the perfect gentleman. But I tell you what, today he was about to rip my arm off. That's new. I absolutely love Archie. He is like having a bromance with a dog. He's this big, burly, blokey dog. He is such a character and absolutely I, I fell in love with him. You're extra grumpy. It just shows you extra sore, doesn't it, you poor boy? Let's have a little feel of those elbows. Wow, they're feeling very, very thickened and actually quite swollen at the moment. Good boy. So what I'm feeling here, Peggy, is just sort of feeling almost of nuts and bolts under the skin. Mm. Yes, there's little bits of bone that are rolling about in that mm. joint. I always think of him as almost like a, a bodybuilder. You know where they go, oh, and they sort of yeah. they, they pump up. Yes, um, yes. And he's sort of doing that at the front. Yes. Um, and by doing so, he's sort of top-loading the front part of his body, and I think that's just wearing him out quicker than he should be. For a three-year-old, I would never expect arthritis. Archie, yep. So what I think that we should be doing today is I will have your chap and I will be taking him downstairs, we'll be doing some x-rays mm -hmm. and have a little look and see what's present in those joints. Okay. And then we can yeah. discuss a bit more about exactly what we're going to do about it. Okay. All right, mate, you're going to spend the day with your buddy, with me, hey? I'm going to see if we can get you walking better again. Mm -hmm. Both Peggy and I are heartbroken to see Archie walking so uncomfortably. And certainly Peggy's living with this every day, so it's a tragic story if we do find that he does have arthritis. Good boy. Well done. Oh, there you go. Good lad. Oh, it's times like this I wish we invested in an elevator. Hi, big boy. <laughs> Come on, it's like Good carrying boy. a fairy rhino. Good boy. I'm going to bring out this leg. Yep. Perfect. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Good boy. Everybody out. Good boy. And x-rays. All right, so we'll just take this, uh, the plate out of the way and then Emma will just go and develop that. Good boy. Arthritis and three-year-olds shouldn't be on the same page. You shouldn't think of them in the same sentence. 
Archie's a good boy. I really think we're going to see arthritis here. These are terrible elbows, and elbows of a dog far older than Archie is, so it's got to be a major problem, and it's certainly something that we need to do a lot about. Oh. He's chilled out a little bit now, hey? You relaxed? I'm certainly warming to him more now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's a good boy. He's a champ. <laughs> he's just misunderstood, but he's grumpy for a very good reason, yeah. aren't you? Because you're just sore. It was great to see Ryan finally be able to see the good side of Archie, the happy side, the non bitey side. I forgive you. I do. Whenever he's not in that car, he always acts beautifully, and he's a perfect gentleman for me. All right, Peggy, I've got your boy. Can't stop, he's heavy. You follow me in. There we go. In you come. Let's pop you down, big guy. There we go. If we can just close the door, please, that'd be great. And what's very clear is there's lots and lots of changes here. This is his elbow joint here. And what you can see is you can see these white bits of fluff. That's arthritic change. That's what's causing the problem. We've got new bone, we've got bone breaking down, building up all at the same time. And that's that nuts and bolts that I can hear and what I can feel yeah. when, I, when I flex and extend his elbow. Yeah. The x-rays are concerning. Archie's just three years old, which works out to about 21 human years. It's like a young man, but with joints of a granddad. There's no drug that exists that's going to fix that. What we need to do is something quite brave, which is to go for arthroscopy. What arthroscopy is, is basically placing instruments into the joint to actually clean all those changes out of the joint. Mm -hmm. And I've got, luckily enough, a very, very good mate who is very good at arthroscopy and I know that he's gonna take very good care of you and Archie. I think it's wonderful, I really do. It gives him another chance and um, a chance to get back on his feet, literally. Wonderful. I didn't think there was an operation. I thought this was how it was going to be and it would only get worse. So it was like another door opening, actually. I was absolutely delighted because now there's some hope for him. And quite honestly, I'd lost hope. I've been so proud of the way that you've taken him on, warts and all, behavioural problems, physical problems, and still managed to keep a smile on your face and still managed to keep him under your roof. And now, hopefully with the surgery, it's going to make a massive difference and hopefully we've gone some way into helping you on that road. Oh, you have done that. You have done that. You've rescued the rescuer. We definitely need some specialist advice here. And my mate Michael Hamilton, specialist orthopaedic surgeon, fantastic in dealing with cases like this. So that's why I'm going to send Archie. My friend Rod is going to take me to the surgery and he's got a wonderful car, so we'll arrive like royalty and that's what Archie likes. He likes to be a bit royal. Oh, and a little treasure. Here we are. Getting around to the car was really easy this morning. We had no trouble at all. Oh, what a good boy. No temperament or anything. He just came out easily. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to meet you both. So here he is, the big man. Hello, Archie. I've been hearing all about you. There we go. <laughs> right. Come on in. Let's have a look. Come on, we're going in. Will he follow you in? Yes, he will. I don't fancy trying to pick him up. <laughs> he was apprehensive, I think, but then he could have picked that up from me because I'm feeling rather apprehensive about this treatment he's going to have. OK, so just extension first of all. Ready, one, two, three. Not too bothered. He's interested. And then this little specific test, right, ready? Ready, one, two, three. Uh, hello, hello. Sorry, big man. I'm just going to do that again. Right, ready, one, two, three. Oh. There we go. Oh, still friends. <laughs> still friends. <laughs> there we go. I think that's quite conclusive, isn't mm. it? OK. Mm. Well done, you. I got his elbow joint there and I just kind of rubbed it and I poked him right on that little spot there. Yes. And that little spot there, that little corner of bone, very commonly, is the bit that just sits a bit proud. So if this is his radius here, and this is the notch of his ulna here like that, that should be a perfect fit. If it's not a perfect fit, and that little corner of bone maybe sits a little bit proud like mm. that, 
it can start to rub mm -hmm. or little bits can start to crack off. And when I poked in there, we got we, we got quite a reaction. Yes. And for, for a bulldog, that's probably that, quite a significant. That's a, yes, yes. So this is a really, really frustrating disease to treat. There is no magic bullet. The point of today was to see where we are. The plan, put the camera in, see what we find. Based on what we find, depends on what we do. But we're not gonna be massively aggressive because we don't need him to start kind of, you know, catching the bad guys like the police dogs need to do kind of thing. Mm. We just need to get him out of pain, basically. Mm. Just a bit stressed, that's all. And uh, can't wait to get down the pub for a gin and tonic. <laughs> Come on in, Archie. Let's do this thing. I hope that I'll be frolicking, frolicking. <laughs> the king through the park soon. Yes, I do. With my dog, of course, not on my own. Oh, look at that. Flying along. Come on, you. This way. This way. He's a good boy. I'll speak to you soon, Peggy. OK. Take care. Yes. Come on, then. Sleepy, sleepy. So his elbow is a bit like an old person's knee, and if he was an old person, um, the doctors would be talking about things like knee replacement. For the time being, he doesn't need the big op. If we're not happy with him, we've got options. So this is the actual arthroscope, which is going to illuminate inside the joint. That's then transmitted to this thing, which is a camera, which then gets made into a picture of what we're going to see inside the joint. Just to have a walk in the park will be wonderful, really wonderful. Camera goes in. So now, up on the TV, is us inside the elbow joint. But my first impression, having just got the camera in, is this does not look very nice at all. All that red stuff there, so that's inflammation of his joint capsule. He's got arthritis, he's had it for ages. That there, on the bottom of the screen, is red bone. So as soon as the camera went in, the first thing that you could see, red bone. What you want to see is white, shiny, articular cartilage. Straight away, red bone is not good news. That is his ulna that I was hoping just to see a little crack in there. That's got no cartilage on it. This dog has got really, really severe cartilage erosion. That means that the less invasive options for him are not on the table anymore. The only options he's got surgically are pretty full-on procedures, cutting bones, plates and screws. We're going to try some medicine first. If it doesn't work and we're not happy, we don't want to leave him in pain. We've got options, but for now, no surgery. Success. <laughs> okay, all good? Yeah. yeah. Right, good. What we've done is we've taken a blood sample from him and we've treated it in such a way that we've collected these little things called platelets, which will release these little anti inflammatory proteins, and we put those into the joint. Fill my landmarks again. And that will do nothing for the cartilage, but what it will do is it'll hopefully make the whole joint just less angry, less inflamed, and less painful. Done. And I'm happy a dog. And a happy owner, and a happy vet. I don't know what Scott was, was uh, moaning about. He's like, as a feather. I could, I could lift him with one arm. I don't know what Scott's banging on about. He's got significant loss of cartilage in his elbow joint. So it's not great news with regard to the cartilage that he's got. Right. So he's very, very much towards the end of the line in terms of his cartilage loss right. than at the start. So right. it's a, it was a bit of a nasty surprise we got yeah. rather than a nice yeah. surprise. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, he doesn't know that, though. No. Don't tell him. No, okay? I won't. I'm not really surprised by the outcome. I didn't think we were going to get away with you know, it being a simple affair. So, you know, so my reaction isn't... I'm not shocked or surprised. I, I thought that there was something pretty serious going on. Here he comes. Here he comes. Archie! Archie there you go, baby. Archie. Oh, my little baby. <laughs> so he wins a little rosette for being brave. So the plasma injection, that will hopefully make him feel a whole lot better. 
For how long? How long is a piece of string? Hopefully, lo long term. He's getting the cutting edge treatment, you know, this is kind of what they do in people, so... Uh, uh, your job, difficult as it might is, try and get him as lean as you can. Yes, I can do that. <laughs> I will definitely Sorry, do mate. that. Sorry, <laughs> mate. If you have to see him again, there'll be less of him Good to stuff. see. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank Hello. you very much. All the best. Thank you you take care. Take care Thank of each you. other. See you, Archie. We've had some pretty good results so far. If we can just get him to have his walk in the park with Peggy, that's what it's all about. And I would be optimistic we can get there. And if that needs surgery down the line, fair enough. But for now, all hope's on the plasma. So we'll see how we get on. Look at that. He's walking better already. So what a big day you've had, mate. So Michael's given me a call. Yeah. And he's told me it's sort of not brilliant news in that we've sort of somehow fallen uh, a little short of what we'd hoped for today, yeah. which was to try and clean up the joint and have it perfect. In mm -hmm. fact, the joint's quite a lot worse. Yeah. And now instead he's used this newfangled technique to try and give him some level of comfort. And it seems that we don't know how long that comfort's going to last for, yeah. but it's a wait and see game. Mm -hmm. The injection that Michael gave is cutting edge. It's not something that is completely understood, so we really don't know what kind of result we're gonna get with Archie. So obviously he's had the first big procedure, yeah. um, but doggy daycare is gonna start now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna be keeping in our mascot just as much as we possibly can to mm -hmm. help you out. Thank you. When Peggy comes back from Michael, she's shattered, and so is Archie. And I think, you know what, she needs a bit of a break and I'm there to help, so doggy daycare, is offered up and Peggy's keen to have it and we're keen to have Archie. He's become part of the furniture now, a big hulking part of the furniture and it gives Peggy a much needed rest. And let's just see how things go. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm really pleased. Good. Really pleased, delighted. It was like the raising of Lazarus because he just walked out really smoothly, really smoothly and I I thought it was wonderful. Absolutely. When you're a busy vet, it's sometimes tough to have a nice quiet moment with your patients and after a long day's work, what nicer than to sit down and have a good old cuddle with Archie. We had a bit of man time, bit of bit of boy bonding. Oh buddy, what a big day you've had, hey? Yeah, you look knackered. Yeah, you do. But let's hope that miracle cure injection Michael's given is going to make all the difference, hey? The pressures of owning Archie, I think, are beginning to take their toll on Peggy. I think there's a very big chance that this is not the end of your story, my friend. Mm. It looks like there is a fairly significant surgery in his near future, and I'm worried that she isn't going to be able to cope. And Archie's future is uncertain. Good lad. Come on, Archie, bit of play time now, mate. Come on, Archie. Who are you? Come on, buddy. He's my boy. He's my boy. Hello. He's a boy. Hello. Are you gonna, hey? Two times. I'm gonna you up. Hey? Oh. I'm gonna wrap oh. you up. Hey? Yeah. What? I know. I know. <laughs> You're tackling me. You've fallen in love with this dog a little bit, haven't you? How could you not? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. <laughs> hey? Look at this Hello. guy. Hey? I think I love his face. <laughs> Which should really put most people off because it normally smells, but I love his little treats. Archie has been really the life and soul of the practice for the last few weeks. He's such a character, he's got such a great nature. And that's been great fun to have him here and to have his sort of energy. So it's gonna be really sad when he goes. <laughs> I don't know whether that's really sweet. Or whether oh, that's really, really disgusting. disgusting. Don't care, do we, mate? Hmm? Don't care. Really have fallen in love with this guy. I'm really going to miss him. No, he's such a character. He's just such a lovely dog. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, he'll certainly leave a big hole in the practice. Mm, massively so. I've just had a phone call from Peggy and she sounds really upset. I don't know what's going on, but something's definitely happened. Uh, she doesn't even want to talk about it over the phone, so I'm just going to drive straight to her house now, check up on Archie and just see exactly what's going on. That 
is very good. Wonderful. I don't know what this plasma was or what it consists of, but it certainly worked for Archie. He's walking much, much better. It's not a permanent solution, but it's certainly making his life more comfortable. What a treasure you are. <laughs> hey, Peggy, it's just Scott. Just let myself in. Hello, Scott. You all right? You yes. sounded pretty distressed on the phone. What's been going on? Oh. Oh, lots. He, um, he bit me. What? Where did he bite you? Show me. Oh, God, Peggy. Well, he was having a sort of choking fit, and I got worried, and this was one o'clock in the morning. I got yeah, worried, yeah. and um, I just called the emergency vet, yeah. and the nurse arrived. She checked him over, did a marvellous job. He was very good, and she was going to take him in her car for observation for the night. Yeah. And um, he snapped at her. I grabbed his head here and pulled him towards my right hand. Mm -hmm. He bit it. So really, I was trying to save her and um, didn't quite do it properly. She's shown me a hand, it's swollen, and there's a couple of stitches in it. I mean, it's, it's a dreadful thing to have happened. So where does that leave us? Well, I don't think that I can keep him simply because I don't have control of him. It needs somebody stronger and younger than me to look after him. Dogs get black banned as being aggressive as soon as they bite, and I'm someone who absolutely backs that up. In the case of Peggy, this was one situation where a stressed dog was being removed from a car that he felt safe and secure in, and he bit someone in a point of madness. I don't think that he meant to bite Peggy, but he did. I just absolutely love him and, and I absolutely love you. Um, you're, you're such a force of nature and, and so is he. And it's just, it, it's heartbreaking to see that, that this hasn't worked out. I knew in my heart of hearts that I couldn't really keep him, but there is somebody who's the right owner for him in the right environment and if if you can find that for me i will be eternally grateful i've never seen peggy with glasses on before and i know that it was her hiding from the world hiding from me and particularly hiding from archie and i could see behind the glasses that there were tears falling today I can't say... I don't know. I don't know what to say. I just... I love him to bits. I love you. I love you to bits, darling. Oh, thank you. I've got a kiss. <laughs> oh, you're going to go to a wonderful home. I know you are. I know you are. And somebody will love you as much as I do, darling. Yes, they will. Yes. Are you going I'm going to miss him too. <laughs> Grumpy old sod. <laughs> I couldn't admire Peggy more, but today she's just gone to another level. She is a classic example of a great British female. She's got that stiff upper lip. She knows what needs to be done and she's going to do it. And it doesn't matter if it hurts her in the process. And today just proves what an extraordinary woman she is. I've taken him from no chance to a good chance, and that's my reward. You know, I'm, I'm not a martyr. I, I, I just You're a think... hero. You're a hero, <laughs> Peggy. That's what you are. You're Archie's hero. Okay? I think the thing is with this guy is that we both love him enough that we need to let him go. That's what real love is. Yeah. That's what real love is. <laughs> I am very upset that he's going but I know it's the right thing to do. Do you want to follow me out to the car or? No, I'd like to... No, I don't want to see him walking away from the house. I think I'd, I'll just say goodbye now. Well, in the garden. Okay. Yeah. Say goodbye to Mummy. Roly-poly, my little roly-poly boy. Oh, 
at you. It's just couldn't face seeing him walk out of a house that last time and uh, it's, it's very sad. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, take care. Come on, mate, let's go. Good boy. Come on, mate. Good boy. Good boy. Let's go. I didn't want him to look back. I wanted him to just go out, and he did it. You know, he d he's not going to miss me as much as I'll miss him. Okay, come on, mate. Good boy. Sit. Let's go. Oh, yes, I'm going to have a good old blub <laughs> and a large gin and tonic. Good boy. Gee, you're walking well, aren't you? Hey? Yes, you're walking well. I know that Scott will find him a really good forever home. I know he will, because I know he cares about him almost as much as I do. Good lad. So this is now my responsibility. What I need to find is someone who understands British Bulldogs. Up you get, good lad. Up, one, two. This isn't a dangerous dog. This is a dog that we need to manage just purely getting in and out of vehicles. That's it. Well done. It's a band-aid treatment which will work and I can ensure long term that he doesn't injure anyone else. My friend, you have to watch your manners. It's nice you worked on your bikini body at least. Yeah, well done. I've come to the beach today to just spend a little bit more time with Archie. He's been such a great dog. We spent such a lot of time together. All the nurses and the vets all love him. It's been a long journey, and now it's all about finding him a new home. Uh, but to do that, I've got to say goodbye, and so it's a pretty sad day. It's your last chance, my friend, OK? So take it with both big grubby paws, yeah? I'm gravely concerned that if he does bite someone again, then he will get put to sleep. He's a healthy dog now, he just needs to be a well-behaved dog, and then I'm sure he'll get us forever home. I'm really happy for Archie that he's found this new foster home, and I'm sure he's going to find a great home after this as well as forever home. The bulldogs, Archie. I think we're here. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Hey, Daniel Scott. Yeah, really good. Let me How's introduce turning? you. Yeah, it was all right. Thanks. Um, now look, this is Archie. Yep. He is my hairy tank. <laughs> The first time I met Lou, I realised straight away she is a woman who absolutely loves bulldogs and I knew that this was the place for Archie. Now I'm going to show you this and I hope you won't judge. Yeah. He's obsessed with the car, um, he loves the car and he's quite territorial of the car. Doesn't like it now. That's it. But just that moment in time. The rest of the time he's an absolute sweetheart. Okay. So, here's hi. the chat. Hi! Say hi! Hi gorgeous! You big handsome brute. I just thought he was adorable. As soon as I saw him through the window, I was like, oh, bless him, he's absolutely gorgeous. Come on then, mate, out you come. Good boy, there we go. And then he comes out. Good boy. <laughs> there you go. Getting Archie out of the car was always a little nerve-wracking, but thankfully, he was the perfect gentleman. He didn't put Lou off at all. She seems completely unfazed by it. Already, I'm feeling this is the place for Archie. OK, so this is his new digs then? Yeah, this is where Archie's going to be living. Boy. This is his little safe place. Um, he's got obviously his bowl there. He will have a food bowl as well, but obviously this is his bed. Bright pink water um, bowl. Lucky he's in touch <laughs> with his feminine side, hey? Definitely. Archie's new home is perfect. It's flat. It is well set up. He's got a pink bowl. What bloke doesn't like a pink bowl? And he's got a gorgeous garden and an absolutely lovely foster mum. So I, I couldn't be happier. I think he's a very, very lucky lad. There's so many bulldog experienced people on our site. You know, someone that understands the breed will do perfectly for him. Yeah. You know, he's quite a laid back dog. So I don't think You can tell that be... already. Yeah. Yeah, because you do get some really manic bulldogs. Um, but no, he just looks adorable. I think he'll fit in really, really well. Oh, you just 
don't understand how much that means to me. It's so great that he's found a home with people that understand bulldogs. Yeah. And occasionally they're a bit grumpy, but it doesn't mean they're not Definitely. fabulous dogs. Yeah. They're not always grumpy. They just look it sometimes. Yeah. But, <laughs> but don't we all? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> But no, he is. He's absolutely gorgeous. I think he'll do really, really well. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks Not for looking after my guy. I You're really, welcome. really appreciate it. It's our pleasure. I'm really happy that he's found you. Yeah. Thank no, you. No, he's lovely. Archie's future's bright, I think. We're going to find him a lovely family. And there's loads of people that are out there waiting for a bulldog like Archie. I think he's going to do really, really well. You have found one hell of a home here with your new mum, Lou. Now, you be a good boy, OK? Scotty loves you. I'll see you soon. Okay, bye, mate. See ya. Oh, blimey. That is nasty. That's actually a fractured jaw. This cat would have hit its head hard and has snapped its jaw in half. We definitely are going to have to fix this jaw, but more importantly, we need to find out who owns you and loves you. Scott, can I borrow you? Yeah, yeah. This little cat has just been brought in. Hello, mate. Um, by a lady passing by. Yeah. She walked over with the dog, didn't try to get away, um, and quite happily let her pick it up. So she okay, that's it odd, in. isn't it? Mm. But that lady obviously is not the cat's owner. No, 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 she's mm. not the owner. So I can see a bit of bruising on the chin here. Mm -hmm. A little bit swollen, isn't it? Yeah. Let me just have a look in your mouth, mate. Yeah, how's that? Ooh, that's actually a fractured jaw right down the centre. So it looks like probably this cat has hit the ground hard, so probably jumped from something out of something. This would be quite an excruciatingly painful injury to suffer for this cat. It's always associated with trauma, so this cat would have hit its head hard and has snapped its jaw in half. Now let's just have a look at your feet. Seems like it's breathing no okay. She seems quite frightened. So no scuffing of the nails are nice and clean. So she wasn't oh, scrabbling up or down anything. Okay, well, let's just scan her first of all and see if she's got a microchip. Do you want to find your mummy or daddy, shall we? Oh dear. Nope, no microchip. Mm. Well, that's going to make it more difficult to find your owner, isn't it? It's very disappointing to find out that this cat has not been microchipped, which is just so important for pets to be able to find their way back home to their loving owners. Okay, well, let's um, have a little check over. Quite a quiet cat, so definitely yeah. it's gone through some type of trauma, I would say. Let's have a little listen. She's very still, she's very quiet and uh, she's uh, got very dilated pupils, so it shows that she's in some level of shock. Uh, and cats in vet clinics don't tend to sit this still. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly classic of a cat that's gone through trauma and now is in shock. Should we be calling your boy a girl? Yes. Definitely a girl. Oh, hello, darling. A little bit sore over her hips there. She's just not happy about me feeling those. So do you think she's fallen or something? I think that's incredibly likely. Um, she's got soreness in her limbs, uh, she's got an injury to her face and she doesn't have frayed nails so mm. she's likely leapt out of one of the buildings nearby mm -hmm. and hit her head on the way down. We definitely are going to have to fix this jaw but more importantly we need to find out who owns you and loves you. Hey, yeah. you're an incredible looking girl, look at those beautiful green eyes. She's gorgeous. Oh, does that hurt? It's quite difficult when you get a stray cat um, that's brought in. Obviously, we have to act in the interest of the animal. I'm going to wire it. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Oh dear. OK, all right, bear with me a second. Scott, is, is that a stray cat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I may have the owner on the oh, phone. No way. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. Hello, it's Scott the vet here. Oh, hi there, Scott. Have you got my cat? We've got a black and white female cat. Okay. Uh, beautiful green eyes. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a 
was like, well, I call him a him, but how did he get to your bed? Um, he got scooped up by some lovely passers-by who noticed... <laughs> I'm struggling to know if I say he or she. And uh, they picked her up and brought her into the practice. Um, and uh, so she's with us at the moment. So what, what do we call her? What's her name? Um, well, I call him him. <laughs> His name's Bruce. Um, <laughs> he's really friendly. Is he OK? Or? Um, she is <laughs> fine. Uh, I think she's probably struggling more with, uh, with her name than the injuries. Oh, Bruce. <laughs> Having an owner who calls his girl cat a boy, even though it's actually a girl, it's pretty confusing. Can I just ask, why do you refer to her as a he? Because <laughs> when I wanted to get a cat, I was insisted I wanted a boy. But then when I seen him, I thought I had to have that one. And unfortunately, he was a female. But <laughs> I called him my little man and everything. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, is that Bruce is my patient. She's had a hell of a fall this morning and I do need to make sure she's okay. Because to be honest, I just don't know how Joseph would cope without her. She has definitely suffered what seems to be a fall. Sadly, she's got a broken jaw. Okay. I live up, like two stories above a restaurant, so That's he's she was like, found. from three floors up. If he had, if the only way he could have got out was by jumping out the window. Three stories. That's incredibly lucky. All right, mate. Well, look, I will look after your your lovely Bruce, the girl, but we'll call him a boy, so he doesn't get confused. <laughs> and um, and hopefully, I look forward to meeting you shortly. Okay, I'll see you soon. Okay, Joseph. Take care. Bye. Bye. Nice oh, guy. bless him. Loves his cat. Yeah, it sounded like he really panicked mm, this your morning. Your daddy loves you. You're too pretty to be called Brucey and a boy. If I made up this story, no one would believe me. If there's a cat that manages to survive jumping out of a third floor window, then gets rescued and brought to the practice, the owner then reports to us that he calls his girl cat a boy. It's honestly unbelievable. So what are we going to do then? Well, the first thing we'll do is um, we'll treat Bruce for shock. So we'll pop him on a drip, mm -hmm. her on a drip. Oh gosh, I'm not going to get that right, am I? When cats jump out of high-rise buildings, they, at lower levels, will try and right themselves and then land normally. But obviously at a height, they're going to injure themselves badly. They get everything from broken jaws to concussions, broken limbs uh, and damage to internal organs. The further up though, they go into free fall and then they actually relax. And because they relax, they don't injure themselves half as much as the ones that jump from lower down. So it's incredibly interesting and it's called high rise syndrome. Relief. No, I can I feel daddy? Oh no. Good girl, Brucey. Hi. Hi, I rang up early. I think you've got my cat, Bruce. You're Joe, aren't you? Yeah. Come with me. Thank you. When I woke up this morning, I was terrified. Oh. I just worked myself into a panic, I couldn't concentrate, I wasn't thinking, I was banging on the neighbours' doors. I just want to have him back in my arms. Do you want to go in first? Thank you. I don't want to get in the way. Oh. Hi, Joseph. Hi. Oh, i got my baby. Hello. Oh, he knows you. Why are you caught? No, no. Oh. oh, my God, you don't understand what it's been like without him. <laughs> Bruce means absolutely everything to me. He is my absolute life. I cannot imagine life without him. There's true love going on here, <laughs> isn't it? It's feeling very emotional. <laughs> I got him when I lived in Nottingham when I was 21. I literally did a Dick Whittington and picked my black and white cat up and just trotted down the M1 since me and Bruce started a life in London like four and a half years ago. Just to think this morning that he wasn't there to continue this journey with me was devastating. And the he thing is definitely something that's going to stay, is it? <laughs> yeah. That's something right, right. <laughs> Always. Anatomically, apart from that... He's my little boy. He's your little boy, my OK. He's soldier. All right, all right. <laughs> what we need to do now is some x-rays first, and then I'm going to wire his jaw, which I know is broken. OK. All right, so be brave, be patient. All right, um, grab a seat upstairs, and we'll look after your little... Man. Man. <laughs> Man. Okay. Take care of him. We will. <laughs> Thank you. We will. Gorgeous. I'm just so worried about him, like, <laughs> he's my baby. Just want him back home. <laughs> now. 
Should we fix your face? Sort you out. Good boy. All right, then, sweetheart. Good puss. Sleepy time. Go snoozy woozy. I am so anxious. Like, literally, I don't know whether to stand or walk. It's just not a nice feeling. Oh, look at that, Jen. Oh, blimey. That is nasty. The two sides aren't together anymore, and we need to make them together. OK. So the way we're going to do that is by using a bit of wire. Just go around both the canines and then back under again. It's a very big needle. Yeah, it's not the most attractive no. of surgeries. There shouldn't be any reason why this cat wouldn't be able to eat. It's just all about holding that jaw together so it feels normal to eat. And what I need to do is now twist it tight to squeeze those two sides of the jaw together. As far as breaks go, for a cat that's jumped out of a window, I actually think this is a pretty lucky get out. Um, yes, of course, he has broken this uh, part of his jaw, but breaks along the ramus, along the sort of arm of the mandible are way worse and way more painful. The mandible is the lower jaw and the symphysis is where it joins in the middle, um, which is just uh, basically where the chin is. Uh, and in Bruce's case, what we've got is that symphysis, that join has broken apart and the wire is all about sticking it back together again. That stays in place for maybe four or six weeks until the jaw's healed and remove it and Bruce will be back to normal. I cannot wait for this to just be over. He's my everything, so I can't actually describe how much I want to see him again. Oh, there you go. It's OK. Oh, dear. Oh, what are you thinking, new jaw, hey? <laughs> Snort of satisfaction. <laughs> we'll go and speak to your daddy, hey? I have just been handed a letter of the person that actually found Bruce this morning. Um, dear Bruce's owner, my neighbour called me at 5.15 this morning to ask if I could help as she had found a cat she thought had been hit by a car. Having spent some hours with him, I have to say I've fallen in love with him. Oh, she calls him a him. Um, so if you ever need a cat sitter, please don't hesitate to call me. All the very best. P.S. This is a copy of the poster my daughter threw together at 6am in an attempt to find you before you went to work. I'm just over the moon, I can't believe it. Bless her. Where is he? Where is he? Hello. <laughs> there you go. Hello. There's your, I'm going to say cat. <laughs> what a good boy. Oh, look at his leg. It's just where they're dripping. That's, that's the least of his oh. problems. Is he um, okay? He's doing great. He's got a little wire in his jaw just here. But otherwise, he's a very, very lucky cat. I cannot believe I have finally got him back in my arms. Like I said, this morning when I woke up, I was in such a panic. I didn't think I'd ever see him again. But thanks to the fantastic people at the vets and such genuine nice people in the world who found him, I finally got him back in my arms where he belongs. Oh, I've missed him so much. He's very lucky. He's used up about 12 of his nine lives. He's a fighter and it's a happy ending to this story, thankfully. I'm so worried, Bruce. Oh, you're all puffed out now, aren't you? What about playing? You sound like a snorting pig. There you go. Sid is a very mischievous dog. His favourite thing is to try and get up the stairs when we leave the stair gate open and go searching for our love interest, which seems to be a big, cuddly penguin in my children's bedroom. Um, he likes some alone time with that penguin. We kind of have to leave him to it and uh, rescue the penguin a bit later. Growing up, I had English Bull Terriers as a childhood pet, and they've obviously got bowed noses and some uh, breathing difficulties. But in the research that I'd done, I hadn't really counted on Sydney having such extensive problems. Come on. Obviously got a short nose, um, but I hadn't even realised that there was a problem with the mouth and the airway. Whee! Good boy. 
When you look at Sydney, he's such a gorgeous dog. He's so popular locally. Yay! Sydney! What people don't realise is that this dog is beset with problems. <laughs> All right, Sid. OK, good boy, good boy. Come on. Playing with other dogs in the park, I have to pull him away after five minutes because he gets so overexcited he can't breathe. Come on, then. Good boy. Good boy. Sometimes he gets so bad I have to carry him home because he just can't catch his breath. It's really upsetting to see him getting distressed and we know that he wants to run and play and it really holds him back that he's just not being able to breathe and get the air down. Good boy, Sid. Dogs like Sydney can go into cardiac arrest because they can't breathe. So it is actually life-threatening, this condition. He's part of the family and we'll do anything that we can do to make him better and give him the comfort he needs to, to get out there and enjoy the park. And we really need to get it sorted out quite quickly. Oh, Sydney, you'll be better soon. Come on. You know where we're going, don't you? Hey, come on then. In we go. Good boy. Oh, that's a big sigh. Hi Jo! Hi! Hi Scott. Sydney! Hello mate! How are you? <laughs> How are you? Hey? Oh you're handsome. He remembers yeah. you. Come on in Jo, let's have a chat. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, I'm really worried about Sid. He's really struggling with breathing and just generally being a puppy in the park and we need to get this sorted. Yeah. How's things been going Jo? Still as snorty as ever I'm guessing. I'm afraid so, yeah. So just to kind of go through some of the symptoms, he snores I'm guessing? Oh yeah. When he goes on a walk, does he pant pretty much the whole time? Yeah. Yeah. And does he pant for a long time after he recovers from an exercise as well? He does, and it exhausts him, so he falls asleep. Yeah. Has he ever collapsed on a walk? Like, has he ever got to the point where he's no. so out of breath that he's gone down? No, but he's been pretty close to it, and I've had to carry him home because he just can't get his breath and can't walk. So he is classic of a lot of flat-faced brachycephalic dogs having this BOAS syndrome. So brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome. Um, lots of big words there. But basically it means that because he's got a short nose and a big domed head, uh, a lot of the structures in the back of the throat are excessive yeah. and those affect his ability to breathe normally. I mean, it's great that he hasn't yet collapsed, mm. but certainly that's where we're headed. Uh, and this kind of dog um, can become blue and purple. You know, they literally aren't getting enough oxygen into their system mm -hmm. to be healthy. Um, and then they can collapse. And look, worst case scenario, I have heard that they can die. Oh. So it isn't something that we can take lightly and Sydney's a great dog and we don't want to get to that point. Seeing Sydney today, it's fairly obvious what we need to do. We need to perform surgery. This isn't fun for him. This isn't a lifestyle that he can endure long term. We need to do something now. And the best option for him is to try and trim the soft palate and make his nostrils a bit bigger. What we're hoping from the surgery is that we're going to have a dog that's going to breathe much easier, um, is not going to be so stressed out in the summer, uh, and hopefully won't snore as much and give you both a good night's sleep. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> I couldn't believe that when it, Scott said he needed surgery, I'm just devastated for Sydney, but also at the same time secretly quite pleased that it's actually going to get him sorted out. Hey mate, we'll sort you out. Yes, we will. Yeah. Let's go. Time for surgery. Come on, you're going to be much better after. Let's go. Come on then. In we go. Good boy. Today. Yeah, absolutely. Nose and soft palate. It's going to be awesome, isn't it, Sid? Bit of plastic yeah. surgery. He loves your shoes, Al. Look, 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 look at these. Look at these. Yeah. Look at these. Look at these. Look at these. Oh, Does he like it? Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so when Sydney gets overexcited, you can hear that snorting and snuffling that's, you know, obviously really affecting him. Oh, he is sweet. Look after yes. my fur, baby. Oh. I will. Bye we'll darling. give you a call when uh, when he's woken up from the general anaesthetic. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Sydney having this operation is going to mean everything for us and him. Good boy. Yeah. And he's going to absolutely love getting out in that park. I know it for a fact. Come on, 
Sydney. This the Uncle Scott. And Hello, Hans. mate. Hiya. Hello, buddy. Hi, buddy. How are you doing? You're right. Yep. Yeah. So your job is quite a challenging one today mm. because here is a dog that has breathing problems. So I thought I'd do him a few drawings just so you girls can see what we're going to be doing. The soft palette looks a little bit like this. Okay. Gemma, you are going to be my surgical assistant today. All right. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to be putting two little sutures called stay sutures in there like that. You're going to be holding them behind my head. Yeah. And then I'm going to lock this bit off wow. like that. Okay. But we have to be very careful. If I if it's too short, it just won't do anything. Yeah. And if it's too long, he can actually get consistent nasal infections. Mm -hmm. So I have to get it right. Yep. The second thing is the nostrils. This is the nose job that you're about to get, mate. What I need to do is to take two wedges out of either side of his nose, like that. And then I suture it back together. And what happens is, is by suturing it back together, it flares the nostrils open and then he'll start having a much, uh, a much easier run when it comes to breathing. Oh, you get to breathe again, Sydney. That's exciting. Is that all right with you? Is that all right yeah. with you? All right, let's oh. get to it. Do it. This particular syndrome of having the long, soft palate and really tiny nostrils can be life-threatening. Uh, dogs can become cyanotic, which means that they have not enough oxygen getting into their system. They turn blue, and uh, yes, they can die if that happens. Come on. Certainly Sydney is a dog that under anaesthetic will be compromised, so we all need to be sure that we know exactly what we're doing, that our roles are defined, and that everyone's on their top game. Okay. Let's straight away, look how much wow. that soft palate goes into his larynx. That's incredible. So, you can see it's actually hanging inside his voice box there. That's the problem. Soft palates in French bulldogs are always fairly sizable, but Sydney's is, a, is an absolute belter. It is huge. It really is. It looks like a second tongue. Great. Okay, let's move him into the surgery and get Go. going. I do need to take quite a bit away from this to make sure I get the result I'm looking for. Right, so I'm just going to place the stay sutures now. Ready to get close and personal? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Hug. I think this is the closest we've ever been. <laughs> I feel your, I feel your hot breath on my neck. I feel like it's more like an experience with a vampire. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Gemma and I are good mates at work, uh, but uh, I don't think we've ever been quite that close. Oh, now all I can think about is your hot breath. <laughs> That's not right, is it, Sydney? <laughs> hey? Okay. That's good. All right, so we're just about to cut now. Wow. There we go. So once we've trimmed back the soft palette, we have just got two edges that we need to suture together and we do that very well. I'm happy with that. That's good. So, <laughs> Gem, if you unhook there. Thank you. Good. Let's embark on that nose job, shall we? Hey? The procedure on the nose is an interesting one because we're taking sections of the nostrils away to actually make the nostrils bigger. But anyone that's ever cut into a nose before will know it bleeds like hell. But very quickly you can control that just by suturing it into the right position and straight away you could see that he had nostrils where he didn't have them before. That's amazing, Scotty. That's beautiful. Like all joking aside, like I'm actually really impressed with what you've just done. Well that's one heck of a nose piercing. Have we come up with the official name for this procedure? Well, it's kind of akin to a rhinoplasty, but that's when people get the sort of the cartilage bit, the yeah. bridge uh, reduced. So this is more of a neuroplasty. Neuroplasty. I could see Scotty as a plastic surgeon for humans. Why? The women would love you coming to get their noses done and their lips done and their boobs done. <laughs> you just imagine the consults, they'd be so different from this, you know, instead of being salivated on and attacked by the leg. It might be actually your time. <laughs> oh dear, you went there, you went there. Oh dear.
A lot of our clients like to come in and they think um, Scott's a dream boat and they all fancy him, my auntie fancies him. Um, so you can just imagine the clientele if he was a plastic surgeon. Women coming in for their lips to be pumped up and things like that. I think it's a bit perfect, isn't it? It's a little bit perfect. You can hang your I know. I know Gemma will say something rude if she doesn't think it is, so come and have a look. Let's have a look. Inspect your work. So we do have to try and keep Scott's ego under control, but we did have to give him praise this time because it was a pretty good job. I think it's pretty perfect. Wow. High praise. I'm scared to say anything about that. <laughs> you should be. Go away. <laughs> You're perfect, Sydney. Good job. All right, let's wake this boy up, shall we? Straight away, as a surgeon, you can see and hear that Sydney's snuffling days are over. Mm. Mm, do you want us to call mummy, eh? Yeah. So everything's gone well. I think we're all super happy with the result. I think in the long run, Sydney is going to be so much happier. We're going to be able to breathe better, going to be able just to enjoy life a little bit better. So here's to Sydney and his new nostrils. I oh know, it's going to feel weird, isn't it? Very good, he's been so lovely. He's been such a good boy. Good recovery? Yeah, really good recovery. There you go, with that new nose. Hey. Ah, oh, looks good. Happy. Without Sid at home today, it's been really quiet. Quiet in the fact that he's not running around under my feet, but also quiet because he's not been snorting and shuffling and snuffling in the background. Come on, big boy. There we go. Let's go find mummy. So it's going to be quite strange going home and him being there and still being silent, but knowing he's there. Oh, here he comes. Hello. Here's oh your boy goodness. with his new face. Oh my gosh, Sid. Hello. What do you think? Hello, it looks amazing. So the surgery went really well. We trimmed that soft palate, so hopefully he won't be gurgling as much. Uh, and then as you can see, he's got some, uh, well, he's got nostrils. <laughs> he didn't have them before. They're excellent. Yeah, I'm really happy. He's done really well and breathing quite quietly, really, considering he's still quite sleepy. Yeah, that's excellent. Thanks, Scott. I think Sydney looks amazing. I can't believe the difference already in the nostril size. With all the swelling reducing over the coming days, I think he's going to just get better and better and better. And hopefully then you'll be able to walk in the park, enjoy the great outdoors, even in hot weather, with a dog that isn't making so much of a racket. Well, Sid, I can get you home. You got him. All right, bye, champ. Bye, mate. Boy, nice nose, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. See, See you, you soon. All the best. All right, take care. Bye. bye. Come on, Sid. See ya. Bye. Bye, Sid. Say bye. Bye, mate. Bye. You're so cute. A little jaw. He's got his beautiful smile all fixed again. <laughs> Six weeks after surgery. Hey, is this the one that you fell out of? To have Bruce back home is beyond words unbelievable. Are you happy to be home? Hey? I'm just so happy to get him back, have everything behind us. Are we going to stay away from them windows? We're going to be grounded. I managed to speak to the lady that found Bruce. I took around uh, a box of chocolates, a bunch of flowers and a bottle of wine. I cannot thank them enough for what they've done. Yeah, absolutely over the moon with them. That's a good boy. Oh, oh, hi, Sydney. Hello, mate. How are you? You're looking fantastic. Hi, Joe. Oh, hi. How good are you? to see you. Yeah, really well. Wow, he looks so... Handsome, look Doesn't at that. Doesn't he? Looks amazing. Look at that nose. Hey. I mean, even at rest, he made a racket, but when he was exercising, he would snort, he would snuffle, he would pant. It was all very distressing and far from normal. But now I know the surgery's been a success and he's a happier dog because he's a quieter dog. Oh, what's that sound I hear? The sound of silence. <laughs> exactly. No snoring. Yeah. So how's it been going? Obviously he's breathing a lot better. Loads better. Um, he's playing with dogs in the park. He's running. He's still a little bit panty, but then he's a French bulldog and that's what French bulldogs do. 
I mean, look, we're never gonna fully fix this guy. At the end of the day, he is a French bulldog. Built like a tank yep. with a flat face. Yep. Uh, he's never gonna be a beautiful gazelle running <laughs> after, you know, the wildebeest in the park. He is always gonna have a, a short run before he's mm. gonna be a bit out of breath, but it's great to hear he's much more comfortable enjoying Absolutely. life. Absolutely, it was the right call to do the operation. That's good, isn't it? That's good to hear. Yeah, hey. oh, sick. Oh, you big wuss. <laughs> hey. What a good boy. Did the nose job help with the ladies at all? You ready? Go on then. Since the operation, he's now enjoying his dog life to the max. Good boy. And as a family, we can see a different change in him. He's really enjoying himself out and about. It was a massive bonus for all of us, him and us. Beautiful animal, aren't you? So handsome. I love you to bits. I really, really love you to bits. Do you love me? Hey, do you love me as well? I first heard about Archie when a friend rang me up. She said she had a bulldog that needed a good home. And I said, no. And then she said, but it's been in the rescue centre for 10 weeks now and it really needs a good home and you could look after it. So having buttered me up, I said yes. Give us a kiss, go on. No, a proper one. Thank you. That was lovely. When I first saw Archie, I thought, that is a big dog. That is big. When Archie came in the house, he did what most dogs would do that aren't used to being in the house, and he marked everywhere. And I realised that I was going to have a job on my hands. Hello, my beautiful boy. My house looked like a Chinese laundry. I had sheets hanging from the banisters, over the chairs, on frames. I had duvets drying. I think the hardest part was to take a job, two and a half years old, never been trained to live in a house. And so that a lot of effort went into getting him clean in the house. How's that foot? Is it working today? Is it? Archie came with lots of problems, lots of health problems. Apparently he had something wrong with his leg and he didn't want to walk. I took him to the park and all he wanted to do was to get back in the car. He wasn't interested in walking. I thought that was very strange. It was really bad. I felt responsible because I'd rescued him. So I was going to do the very best I could. I did this little step thing, you know, footstool, chair, bed. And he could get up a bit of steam and jump onto the bed, and he loved it. <laughs> I did feel really sorry for him. He was coping, but I know that they're stoic dogs and that they'll cope with things that other dogs can't cope with. I knew I'd taken on something that I might not be able to um, cope with. Let's go and say hello to the vet. What's this? Come on then, baby. Oh, good boy. So, Jess, what do we have on this afternoon? Oh, we've got Archie in today. Archie. He's a good boy, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's good. Have you met Archie before? No, I don't believe I have. Okay. Yeah, he's a good boy. Have you got him out of the car before? No, I haven't. I think it'll be good for your training. Okay, we'll yeah. see how that goes then. <laughs> it's definitely your turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Archie. Hello. Hi, boy. Archie laid claim to the car. I think he must have lived in a car. It must have been his kennel, if you like, because he made it his own. Come on. And he didn't like other people, especially men, trying to get him out of the car. Hey, Archie. You all right? Hey. Oh. It's an overwhelming feeling of dread. <laughs> there's, there's a serious risk of losing an arm. Come on. I think we need to stop. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. okay. So Jess and I looked at each other and we said, do you know what? We admit defeat. It's time for Scott. Neither of us are that brave. Um, it's his practice, it's his arm. <laughs> hey, Peggy. I hear he's performing, is he? No, he's being lovely, Scott. Oh, really? You're being a right old grump. Come on, then, you big wuss. 
When Jess and Ryan came in needing help, I, I wasn't surprised. Uh, it's not the first time and it certainly won't be the last. Archie loves the car and is more than happy to tell people to go away in dog speak. Come on. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Bad behaviour is not tolerated. Come on. Right. There we go. That was a bit naughty, wasn't it? Come on, ain't you old grump? Here we go. Come on. I first met Peggy and Archie in the clinic and straight away I thought, this is an odd couple. Gee, he's walking like an old man in a young dog's body. Archie's a handful, there's no doubt about that. And it's not just the physical problems that he's got going on, but also the behavioural, the mental ones. But Peggy just wants to do the best for Archie and I salute her for that. She's an absolute star. Peggy, I tell you what, I've never noticed Archie look quite that bad walking in. Has he really been struggling with walking of late? He has been, and it's been deteriorating, which is the reason I've brought him in today. Yeah, bless him. And I tell you what, normally, when I've got him out of the car before, he's been the perfect gentleman. But I tell you what, today, he was about to rip my arm off. That's new. I absolutely love Archie. He is like having a bromance with a dog. He's this big, burly, blokey, Dog. He is such a character and absolutely I, I fell in love with him. Your extra grumpy, it just shows your extra sore, doesn't it, your poor boy. It's a little feel of those elbows. Wow, they're feeling very, very thickened and actually quite swollen at the moment. Good boy. So what I'm feeling here, Peggy, is just sort of feeling almost of nuts and bolts under the skin. Mm. It's those little bits of bone that are rolling about in that mm. joint. I always think of him as almost like a, a bodybuilder. You know where they go, ooh, ooh, and they sort of yeah. they, they pump up. Yes, um, yes. And he's sort of doing that at the front. Yes. Um, and by doing so, he's sort of top-loading the front part of his body, and I think that's just wearing him out quicker than he should be. For a three-year-old, I would never expect arthritis. Archie, yep. So what I think that we should be doing today is I will have your chap and I will be taking him downstairs, we'll be doing some x-rays mm -hmm. and have a little look and see what's present in those joints. Okay. And then we can yeah. discuss a bit more about exactly what we're going to do about it. Okay. All right, mate, you're going to spend the day with your buddy, with me, hey? I'm going to see if we can get you walking better again. Hmm? Both Peggy and I are heartbroken to see Archie walking so uncomfortably. And certainly Peggy's living with this every day, so it's a tragic story if we do find that he does have arthritis. Good boy. Well done. Oh, there you go. Good lad. Oh, it's times like this I wish we invested in an elevator. Hi, big boy. <laughs> Come on, it's like Good carrying boy. a fairy rhino. Good boy. I'm going to bring out this leg. Yep. Perfect. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Good boy. Everybody out. Good boy. And x-rays. All right, so we'll just take this, uh, the plate out of the way and then Emma will just go and develop that. Good boy. Arthritis and the three-year-old shouldn't be on the same page. You shouldn't think of them in the same sentence. Archie's a good boy. I really think we're going to see arthritis here. These are terrible elbows, and elbows of a dog far older than Archie is, so it's got to be a major problem, and it's certainly something that we need to do a lot about. Ooh. He's chilled out a little bit now, hey? You relaxed? I'm certainly warming to him more now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, he's a good boy. He's a champ. <laughs> he's just misunderstood, but he's grumpy for a very good reason, yeah. aren't you? Because you're just sore. It was great to see Ryan finally be able to see the good side of Archie, the happy side, the non-bitey side. I forgive you. I do. Whenever he's not in that car, he always acts beautifully and he's a perfect gentleman for me. All right, Peggy, I've got your boy. Can't stop, he's heavy. You follow me in. There we go. In you come. Let's pop you down, big guy. There we go. If we can just close the door, please, that'd be great. What's very clear is there's lots and lots of changes here. This is his elbow joint here. And what you can see is you can see these white bits of fluff. That's arthritic change. That's what's causing the problem. We've got new bone, we've got bone breaking down, building up all at the same time. And that's that nuts and bolts that I can hear and what I can feel yeah. when, I, when I flex and extend his elbow. Yeah. The x-rays are concerning. Archie's just three years old, which works out to about 21 human years. It's like a young man, but with joints of a granddad. There's no drug that exists that's going to fix that. What we need to do is something quite brave, which is to go for arthroscopy. 
What arthroscopy is, is basically placing instruments into the joint to actually clean all those changes out of the joint. Mm -hmm. And I've got, luckily enough, a very, very good mate who is very good at arthroscopy and I know that he's going to take very good care of you and Archie. I think it's wonderful, I really do. It gives him another chance and um, a chance to get back on his feet, literally. Wonderful. I didn't think there was an operation. I thought this was how it was going to be and it would only get worse. So it was like another door opening, actually. I was absolutely delighted because now there's some hope for him. And quite honestly, I'd lost hope. I've been so proud of the way that you've taken him on, warts and all, behavioural problems, physical problems, and still managed to keep a smile on your face and still managed to keep him under your roof. And now, hopefully with the surgery, it's gonna make a massive difference and hopefully we've gone some way into helping you on that road. Oh, you have done that, you have done that. You've rescued the rescuer. We definitely need some specialist advice here. My mate Michael Hamilton, specialist orthopaedic surgeon, fantastic in dealing with cases like this. So that's what I'm gonna send Archie. My friend Rod is going to take me to the surgery and he's got a wonderful car, so we'll arrive like royalty and that's what Archie likes. He likes to be a bit royal. Oh, what a little treasure. Here we are. Getting around to the car was really easy this morning. We had no trouble at all. Oh, what a good boy. No temperament or anything. He just came out easily. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to meet you both. So here he is, the big man. Hello, Archie. I've been hearing all about you. There we go. <laughs> right. Come on in. Let's have a look. Come on, we're going in. Will he follow you in? Yes, he will. I don't fancy trying to pick him up. <laughs> he was apprehensive, I think, but then he could have picked that up from me because I'm feeling rather apprehensive about this treatment he's going to have. OK, so just extension first of all. Ready, one, two, three. Not too bothered. He's interested. And then this little specific test, right, ready? Ready, one, two, three. Uh, oh. Hello, hello. Sorry, big man. I'm just going to do that again. Right, ready, one, two, three. Oh. There we go. Oh, still friends. <laughs> still friends. <laughs> there we go. I think that's quite conclusive, isn't mm. it? OK. Mm. Well done, you. I got his elbow joint there and I just kind of rubbed it and I poked him right on that little spot there. Yes. And that little spot there, that little corner of bone, very commonly, is the bit that just sits a bit proud. So if this is his radius here, and this is the notch of his ulna here like that, that should be a perfect fit. If it's not a perfect fit, and that little corner of bone maybe sits a little bit proud like mm -hmm. that, it can start to rub, mm -hmm. or little bits can start to crack off. And when I poked in there, we got, we, we got quite a reaction. Yes. And for, for a bulldog, that's... Probably that, quite a significant. That's, yes, yes. So this is a really, really frustrating disease to treat. There is no magic bullet. The point of today was to see where we are. The plan, put the camera in, see what we find. Based on what we find, depends on what we do. But we're not going to be massively aggressive because we don't need him to start kind of, you know, catching the bad guys like the police dogs need to do kind of thing. Mm. We just need to get him out of pain, basically. Mm. Just a bit stressed, that's all. And uh, can't wait to get down the pub for a gin and tonic. <laughs> Come on in, Archie. Let's do this thing. I hope that I'll be frolicking, frolicking, <laughs> frolicking through the park soon. Yes, I do. With my dog, of course, not on my own. <laughs> oh, look at that. Flying along. Come on, you. This way. This way. He's a good boy. I'll speak to you soon, Peggy. OK. Take care. Yes. Come on, then. Sleepy, sleepy. Ah, 
So his elbow is a bit like an old person's knee, and if he was an old person, um, the doctors would be talking about things like knee replacement. For the time being, he doesn't need the big op. If we're not happy with him, we've got options. So this is the actual arthroscope, which is going to illuminate inside the joint. That's then transmitted to this thing, which is a camera, which then gets made into a picture of what we're going to see inside the joint. Just to have a walk in the park will be wonderful, really wonderful. Camera goes in. So now up on the TV is us inside the elbow joint. But my first impression, having just got the camera in, is this does not look very nice at all. All that red stuff there, so that's inflammation of his joint capsule. He's got arthritis, he's had it for ages. That there, on the bottom of the screen, is red bone. So as soon as the camera went in, the first thing that you could see, red bone. What you want to see is white, shiny, articular cartilage. Straight away, red bone is not good news. That is his ulna that I was hoping just to see a little crack in there. That's got no cartilage on it. This dog has got really, really severe cartilage erosion. That means that the less invasive options for him are not on the table anymore. The only options he's got surgically are pretty full-on procedures, cutting bones, plates and screws. We're going to try some medicine first. If it doesn't work and we're not happy, we don't want to leave him in pain. We've got options, but for now, no surgery. Success. <laughs> OK, all good? Yeah. yeah. Right, good. What we've done is we've taken a blood sample from him and we've treated it in such a way that we've collected these little things called platelets which will release these little anti-inflammatory proteins and we put those into the joint. Fill my landmarks again. And that will do nothing for the cartilage, but what it will do is it'll hopefully make the whole joint just less angry, less inflamed and less painful. Done. And I'm happy a dog. And a happy owner and a happy vet. I don't know what Scott was, was uh, moaning about. He's like, as a feather. I could, I could lift him with one arm. Not what Scott's banging on about. He's got significant loss of cartilage in his elbow joint. So it's not great news with regard to the cartilage that he's got. Right. So he's very, very much towards the end of the line in terms of his cartilage loss right. than at the start. So right. it's a, it was a bit of a nasty surprise we got yeah. rather than a nice yeah. surprise. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, he doesn't know that, though. No. Don't tell him. No, okay? I won't. I'm not really surprised by the outcome. I didn't think we were going to get away with, you know, it being a simple affair. So, you know, so my reaction isn't... I'm not shocked or surprised. I, I thought that there was something pretty serious going on. Here he comes. Here he comes. Archie! Archie there you go, baby. Archie. Oh, my little baby. <laughs> so he wins a little rosette for being brave. So the plasma injection, that will hopefully make him feel a whole lot better. For how long? How long is a piece of string? Hopefully, lo long term. He's getting the cut and edge treatment. You know, this is kind of what they do in people. So. Uh, uh, your job, difficult as it might is, try and get him as lean as you can. Yes, I can do that. <laughs> I will definitely Sorry, do mate. that. Sorry, <laughs> mate. If you have to see him again, there'll be less of him to Good see. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank Hello. you very much. All the best. Thank you, you take Michael. care. Take care Thank of each you. other. See you, Archie. We've had some pretty good results so far. If we can just get him to have his walk in the park with Peggy, that's what it's all about. And I would be optimistic we can get there. And if that needs surgery down the line, fair enough. But for now, all hope's on the plasma. So we'll see how we get on. Look at that. He's walking better already. So what a big day you've had, mate. So Michael's given me a call. Yeah. And he's told me, it's sort of not brilliant news in that we've sort of somehow fallen uh, a little short of what we'd hoped for today, yeah. which was to try and clean up the joint and have it perfect. In mm -hmm. fact, the joint's quite a lot worse. Yeah. And now instead he's used this newfangled technique to try and give him some level of comfort. And it seems that we don't know how long that comfort's going to last for. Yeah. But it's a wait and see game. Mm -hmm. The injection that Michael gave is cutting edge. It's not something that is completely understood, so we really don't know what kind of result we're going to get with Archie. So obviously he's had the first big procedure, yeah. um, but doggy daycare is going to start now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be keeping in our mascot just as much as we possibly can to mm -hmm. help you out. Thank you. 
when Peggy comes back from Michael, she's shattered and so is Archie. And I think, you know what, she needs a bit of a break and I'm there to help. So doggy daycare is offered up and Peggy's keen to have it and we're keen to have Archie. He's become part of the furniture now, a big hulking part of the furniture. And it gives Peggy a much needed rest. And let's just see how things go. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm really pleased. Good. Really pleased, delighted. It was like the raising of Lazarus because he just walked out really smoothly, really smoothly. And I've, I've thought it was wonderful, absolutely. Good boy. When you're a busy vet, it's sometimes tough to have a nice quiet moment with your patients. And after a long day's work, what nicer than to sit down and have a good old cuddle with Archie. We had a bit of man time, bit of bit of boy bonding. Oh, buddy, what a big day you've had, hey? Yeah. You look knackered. Yeah, you do. But let's hope that miracle cure injection Michael's given is going to make all the difference. Eh? The pressures of owning Archie, I think, are beginning to take their toll on Peggy. I think there's a very big chance that this is not the end of your story, my friend. Mm. It looks like there is a fairly significant surgery in his near future, and I'm worried that she isn't going to be able to cope. And. Archie's future is uncertain. Good lad. Come on, Archie. Bit of late time now, mate. Come on, Archie. Come on, buddy. He's my boy. He's my boy. Hello. He's a boy. Hello. You're gonna. Hey. Chit chat. Hey. You're gonna wrap you up, honey. Yeah. What? I know. I know. <laughs> You're tackling me. You've fallen in love with this dog a little bit, haven't you? How could you not? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Hey, look at this guy. Hey. I think I love his face. <laughs> Which should really put most people off because it normally smells, but I love his little treats. Archie has been really the life and soul of the practice for the last few weeks. He's such a character, he's got such a great nature, and that's been great fun to have him here and to have his sort of energy, so it's going to be really sad when he goes. <laughs> I don't know whether that's really sweet or whether that's oh, really, disgusting. really disgusting. Don't care, do we, mate? Hmm? Don't care. Really have fallen in love with this guy. I'm really going to miss him. No, he's such a character. He's just such a lovely dog. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, he'll certainly leave a big hole in the practice. Mm, massively so. I've just had a phone call from Peggy and she sounds really upset. I don't know what's going on, but something's definitely happened. Uh, she doesn't even want to talk about it over the phone, so I'm just going to drive straight to her house now, check up on Archie and just see exactly what's going on. That is very good. Wonderful. I don't know what this plasma was or what it consists of, but it certainly worked for Archie. He's walking much, much better. It's not a permanent solution but it's certainly making his life more comfortable. What a treasure you are. <laughs> hey, Peggy, it's just Scott. Just let myself in. Hello, Scott. You all right? You yeah. sounded pretty distressed on the phone. What's been going on? Oh. Hello, oh, lots. He, um, he bit me. What? Where did he bite you? Show me. Oh, God, Peggy. Well, he was having a sort of choking fit and I got worried and this was one o'clock in the morning. I got yeah, worried yeah. and um, I just called the emergency vet yeah. and the nurse arrived. She checked him over, did a marvellous job. He was very good and she was going to take him in her car for observation for the night. Yeah. And um, he snapped at her. I grabbed his head here and pulled him towards my right hand. Mm -hmm. He bit it. So really, I was trying to save her and um, didn't quite do it properly. She's shown me a hand, it's swollen, and there's a couple of stitches in it. I mean, it's, it's a dreadful thing to have happened. So where does that leave us? Well, 
I don't think that I can keep him simply because I don't have control of him. It needs somebody stronger and younger than me to look after him. Dogs get black banned as being aggressive as soon as they bite and I'm someone who absolutely backs that up. In the case of Peggy, this was one situation where a stressed dog was being removed from a car that he felt safe and secure in and he bit someone in a point of madness. I don't think that he meant to bite Peggy, but he did. I just absolutely love him and, and I absolutely love you. Um, you're, you're such a force of nature and, and so is he and it's just, it, it's heartbreaking to see that, that this hasn't worked out. I knew in my heart of hearts that I couldn't really keep him, but there is somebody who's the right owner for him in the right environment and if if you can find that for me, I will be eternally grateful. I've never seen Peggy with glasses on before, and I know that it was her hiding from the world, hiding from me, and particularly hiding from Archie. And I could see behind the glasses that there were tears falling today. I can't say... I don't know, I don't know what to say. I just, I love him to bits, I love you. I love you to bits, darling. Oh, thank you, I've got a kiss. <laughs> oh, you're gonna go to a wonderful home. I know you are, I know you are. And somebody will love you as much as I do, darling. Yes, they will. Yes. Are you going to I'm gonna to miss, miss him too. <laughs> grumpy old sod. <laughs> I couldn't admire Peggy more, but today she's just gone to another level. She is a classic example of a great British female. She's got that stiff upper lip. She knows what needs to be done and she's going to do it. And it doesn't matter if it hurts her in the process. And today just proves what an extraordinary woman she is. I've taken him from no chance to a good chance, and that's my reward. You know, I'm, I'm not a martyr. I, I, I just You're a think... hero. You're a hero, <laughs> Peggy. That's what you are. You're Archie's hero. Okay? I think the thing is with this guy is that we both love him enough that we need to let him go. That's what real love is. Yeah. That's what real love is. Yeah. <laughs> I am very upset that he's going but I know it's the right thing to do. Do you want to follow me out to the car or? No, I'd like to... No, I don't want to see him walking away from the house. I think I'd, I'll just say goodbye now. Okay. Well, in the garden. Okay. Yeah. Say goodbye to mummy. Roly poly, my little roly poly boy, aren't you? She just couldn't face seeing him walk out of a house that last time and uh, it's... It's very sad. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, take care. Come on, mate, let's go. Good boy. Come on, mate. Good boy. Good boy. Let's go. I didn't want him to look back. I wanted him to just go out, and he did it. He's not going to miss me as much as I'll miss him. OK, come on, mate. Good boy. Sit. Let's go. Oh, yes, I'm going to have a good old blub <laughs> and a large gin and tonic. Good boy. Gee, you're walking well, aren't you? Hey? Yes, you're walking well. I know that Scott will find him a really good forever home. I know he will because I know he cares about him almost as much as I do. Good lad. So this is now my responsibility. What I need to find is someone who understands British Bulldogs. Up you get, good lad. Up, one, two. This isn't a dangerous dog. This is a dog that we need to manage just purely getting in and out of vehicles. That's it. Well done. It's a band-aid treatment which will work and I can ensure long term that he doesn't injure anyone else.
My friend, you have to watch your manners. It's nice you worked on your bikini body at least. Yeah, well done. I've come to the beach today to just spend a little bit more time with Archie. He's been such a great dog. We spent such a lot of time together. All the nurses and the vets all love him. It's been a long journey and now it's all about finding him a new home. Uh, but to do that, I've got to say goodbye and so it's a pretty sad day. It's your last chance, my friend, okay? So take it with both big grubby paws, yeah? I'm gravely concerned that if he does bite someone again, then he will get put to sleep. He's a healthy dog now, he just needs to be a well-behaved dog, and then I'm sure he'll get us forever home. I'm really happy for Archie that he's found this new foster home, and I'm sure he's gonna find a great home after this as well as forever home. The bulldogs, Archie. I think we're here. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. How are you doing, Scott? Yeah, really good. Let me How's introduce the you. Yeah, it was all right. Thanks. Um, now look, this is Archie. Yep. He is my hairy tank. <laughs> The first time I met Lou, I realised straight away she is a woman who absolutely loves bulldogs, and I knew that this was the place for Archie. Now I'm going to show you this, and I hope you won't judge. Yeah. He's obsessed with the car. Um, he loves the car, and he's quite territorial of the car. Doesn't like it now. That's it. But just that moment in time. The rest of the time, he's an absolute sweetheart. Okay. So here's hi. the chat. Hi. Say hi. Hi, gorgeous. You big handsome brute. I just thought he was adorable. As soon as I saw him through the window, I was like, oh, bless him, he's absolutely gorgeous. Come on then, mate, out you come. Good boy, there we go. And then he comes out. Good boy. <laughs> there you go. Getting Archie out of the car was always a little nerve-wracking, but thankfully, he was the perfect gentleman. He didn't put Lou off at all. She seems completely unfazed by it. Already, I'm feeling this is the place for Archie. Okay, so this is his new digs then? Yeah, this is where Archie's going to be living. Boy. This is his little safe place. Um, he's got obviously his bowl there. He will have a food bowl as well, but obviously this is his bed. Bright pink um, water bowl. Lucky he's in <laughs> touch with his feminine side, hey? Definitely. Archie's new home is perfect. It's flat, it is well set up, he's got a pink bowl. What bloke doesn't like a pink bowl? And he's got a gorgeous garden and an absolutely lovely foster mum. So I, I couldn't be happier. I think he's a very, very lucky lad. There's so many bulldog experienced people on our site. You know, someone that understands the breed will do perfectly for him. Yeah. You know, he's quite a laid back dog. So I don't think You can tell that be... already. Yeah. Yeah, because you do get some really manic bulldogs. Um, but no, he just looks adorable. I think he'll fit in really, really well. Oh, you just don't understand how much that means to me. It's so great that he's found a home with people that understand bulldogs. Yeah. And occasionally they're a bit grumpy, but it doesn't mean they're not Definitely. fabulous dogs. Yeah. They're not always grumpy, they just look it sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> but don't we all? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but no, he is, he's absolutely gorgeous. I think he'll do really, really well. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks not for looking after my guy. You're I really, welcome. really appreciate it. It's our I'm, pleasure. I'm really happy that he's found you. Yeah, thank no, you. he's lovely. Archie's future's bright, I think. We're going to find him a lovely family. And um, there's loads of people that are out there waiting for a bulldog like Archie. I think he's going to do really, really well. You have found one hell of a home here with your new mum, Lou. Now, you be a good boy, OK? Scotty loves you. And I'll see you soon. OK, bye, mate. Mwah. See ya. So his hip joint is no good. It's cactus. What is the procedure now? Sadly, the only way to fix this is surgery. I think it's a, a worthy gamble. A worthy gamble. The thing about Leo's hip replacement is he's tiny. There's very little room for error here. Wow. If we go too far, it's game over. I hope Scott's going to say your leg is all right. Is your leg going to be all right? I can see that when he's walking, he skips a bit. And I can see he lifts the left leg a lot and he still cannot go up the sofa, he doesn't go down and sometimes you can see he makes some noise, that is my concern now. He's such a spoiled boy. 
I hope it's something minor, it's just a tick or something that he's got and it's nothing serious. Okay. I just can't imagine going through the stress of uncertainty. Are you going to give the mouse to Leo? <laughs> Are you going to give the mouse to Leo? In my heart, you know, beating and saying, no, please, no, don't be anything serious. You know what you went through, hey? Oh, you don't want your brother to get sick, he's as well, no. When I started seeing that Leo was limping, I thought to myself, oh gosh, we're going to have to go through the whole surgery again. So Bella went into surgery and she was pining at the process of losing Oscar. So our friends all got together and decided they're going to get Leo as a friend for Isabella just to boost up her morale. Leo, he's a, a ball of love. He filled a, a hole that we had in our heart, a big hole in our heart, and, uh, and he, he's just precious, really precious dog. We just thought, oh my gosh, we're really unlucky to be in this situation again. But we have to sort this out, because we can see he's not well. Fingers crossed, hopefully he'll come out of it without going through surgery or under the knife, because I can't imagine going through, the, uh, through that whole procedure again, to tell the honest truth. Now you're going to the vet, you're going to see the doctor, baby. Yes. yes. Let's go. to the vet. Look Let's here, baby. Go. Isabella, do you remember where you are? We're going to the vet. You're going to see Scott. Hello, Scott. good to oh, see you. Very Good well, very well. Hi, Hi Michael. Scott. Hello, Pops. Hello. Hello, you two. Aren't they the most gorgeous couple? Aren't they? Yes, they hey. are. <laughs> Yin and Yang. Hey. Yes. All right, well, why don't you guys come on in? It's always great to see Michael and Anderson in the practice, but at the same time, you're always quite concerned as to what they're coming in for. They've had a huge amount of bad luck in the past with their animals who they adore. Uh, so I hope that it's not too serious this time around. So which one of this beautiful couple has come to see me today? That's it's Leo. <laughs> it's Leo. Oh, today. is that right? I know they're inseparable, but I think you've been through more than enough, haven't you, sweetheart? And she's looking great. She's been very healthy as well. She hasn't seen Amazing. me for a while. Amazing. Since she came from surgery, she's a different dog. Gee, this guy has got uh, some pressure on his shoulders. He's got to yes. fill Oscar's shoes. And how's yes. he been doing with that? Hello, mate. He's been doing quite well. Yeah. The only thing, I don't know if it is a big concern, mm -hmm. but sometimes when we play with him uh, and we touch his leg, he sometimes cries, so All I don't right. know if okay. that could be an issue. Yeah, has anything so, happened to him that made you worry that you know, maybe it was an injury? Or? No, no, nothing. No. It's just when he's walking or running, he quite often lifted leg. Mm -hmm. That is my concern that something could be wrong. Mm -hmm. yes. One of the first things I can feel is that the leg on the left-hand side, the muscles there are smaller than the ones on the right. His hip now, and just see what's going on. Oh, goodness. Oh, baby boy. Oh, so that's certainly where the sore bit is, isn't it, mate? Yeah, I can feel that the thigh muscle is definitely smaller than the right-hand side, and the discomfort is coming from his hip. So it's quite a obvious pain, and he seems to be quite painful. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though he's not showing it at home, it might just mean that he is reducing the amount of jumping that he's doing, the running that he's doing. Uh, he's just being a quiet, sedentary little dog, and I know that they're quite keen on being cuddled and carried mm -hmm. anyway. Um, so, you know, that's probably hiding a lot of the symptoms from you. Mm -hmm. So, I think the most obvious thing for us to do today is try and take some pictures of the affected joint, uh, which is, of course, in the form of x-rays. The Yelp wasn't good news, was it? And that's not very promising when you hear him scream like that. So something must be really seriously wrong with him for him to be in such pain. It's pretty obvious that there is an issue there. And it's definitely something that we all need to understand. You guys, I know, have been through a lot already. Um, yeah. So we just need to make sure that we're not missing anything and that mm. we're doing all the right things for okay, Leo. Right. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, look buddy. after our dog for us, please. I will. 
Let's stay with Uncle Scott today. Will you give daddies a kiss? All right. Okay. Come on, you got. Leo's not yet a full grown puppy yet. He's already got such a serious issue. It is a bit concerning for us. All right, then. I'll look after your chap and I will see you in a few hours' time. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye, bye. guys. Bye, Isabella. Say bye, daddies. Say bye. Okay, let's see your little Leo. Okay, there we are again. Hello again. Hello again. We are to see the results. Indeed, the images are ready now, so oh, if you'd like to go on through. Okay, well, thank, thank you, you very much. Okay, no problem. Come on in, gents. Hi, Scott, how are you? Yeah, Hello, very Scott. Very good. Come on in. I'll give you back your boy. Be nice and gentle with him. Because uh, unfortunately, I haven't got the greatest of news to deliver. Uh, you guys really know how to pick them. This guy has a condition called leg calf perthes disease. It's a mouthful, but it's a degenerative condition of his hip joint. All right. This is Leo on his back. This is his spine and his pelvis here. Mm -hmm. Now, on this side, you can see the whole section of that, the end of the femur, is a little bit longer. It's definitely abnormal. The shape isn't the classic ball. And what you can see is that big black dot yeah. in the middle there, which shows that already the femoral head is starting to collapse. It's starting to break down. And that's where the discomfort is coming from. Michael and Anson know me well enough to be able to read my face and straight away they're anxious and upset. Sometimes life is just so cruel. So his hip joint is no good. It's cactus. It's such an extraordinary run of bad luck for these guys. They've had a dog that needed heart surgery. They've had a dog that was cruelly ripped from them as it got hit by a car. And now Leo has got a hip that's got some major problems with it. I mean, it's just so cruel. What is the procedure now? Sadly, the only way to fix this is surgery. I think I wasn't expecting that at all. No, it wasn't something we were expecting. I thought something is small, we can sort it here now and then. And you have to go through the knife. Well, there's two very clear options surgically. Uh, one is something that I can do, which is removal of the femoral head and neck. And what it leads to is a free floating leg, which sounds crazy, because you think you've got to have a joint, but uh, little dogs like this, they're very nimble, they're very light, and they can actually work very well with no hip joint. And it's the hip joint itself that's causing the pain in Leo, and that would be removed. The gold standard, however, is something called a total hip replacement. It is placing a false ball and a false socket into his hip and completely replacing the degenerate one that he's got. Now that's unfortunately not something that I can do. It's highly specialized, particularly in a little dog like him. It's not very good news to hear that you have a little baby, such a small baby has to go through it, unfortunately. And which, in your opinion, would be the better option then? Well, guys, I'd say the gold standard, I think, is going and getting the total hip replacement. It's a massive surgery, but I think the benefits afterwards are considerable. And the fact that he is such a young dog and he's probably got a good 15 years to live, I think it's a, a worthy gamble. A worthy gamble. I think we've got no choice but to go for the better option. <sighs> Surgery again. Okay, yeah. I think we're going to do the surgery, Scott. To hear about a total hip replacement, they're very concerned but I think they're also resolute. They want the best for Leo and they're willing to hold his little paw through it. Now we have to see Mike. It's going to be a big surgery. Oh, God. Hey, hey, hey. 
imagining the implant being so tiny and his bones being so small and then cutting that bone of his to put that implant is a bit overwhelming. <coughs> Every time he sees a dog, he just explodes. Shush! It's like a little monster that comes out. Hello, Leo. He seems pretty chipper, doesn't he? Uh, yes. Relaxed it's, about the whole thing? Uh, he doesn't know what is coming up. <laughs> That's why. Come on in. Come on in. Small as he is, this left leg is a lot smaller than his than his right leg. He's yeah. lost quite a lot of muscle on that side as well, muscle, so um, yeah. which kind of fits with his problem. Yeah. He's been on for a little while, so because we've noticed when he's walking, so he lifts up his yeah, leg all yeah. the time. Yeah, bless him. Okay, that's great. So if you just give him a little cuddle, then I'll just quickly talk you through what it is and what the plan is. So you have standard hip replacement, which yeah. is kind of uh, Labrador's, gem oh, okay. that kind of thing, which is this kind of size, I guess. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they developed micro hip oh, replacement, okay. and now they've got nano hip nano. replacement. Oh, okay. he's, a, nano. he's a nano. <laughs> he's a nano total hip replacement. Yeah. Oh, shit. The plan is that he's going to have a plastic on metal hip with no pain, with a normal range of motion, and he's going to be running around as a as a normal dog. So that's, that's what we were hoping that's, that's, for. That's yes. the whole point. So let's go do a nano hip replacement. Let's do Okay, it. Yes. right, follow me. It's going to be really stressful until I get the call from Michael saying that the surgery's been all okay. There you go. You want to give your daddy a kiss? Um, there you go. Good luck. There we go. Right then. Michael, we'll speak later on. All right. Okay, I'll right. Be okay, don't worry. We'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Come on then, you. Let's get you sorted out. Okay. Always a funny thing to do, isn't it? That tickle. You're okay. That's good, good boy. boy. It's okay. Good boy. He's going to get an epidural for um, extra analgesia, but we're not going to put in as much local anaesthetic as we normally do because. He might be a little bit wobbly after the procedure, which is exactly what we don't want when, he, when he's got his new hip in there. So we're just going to put a bit of morphine in there for analgesia. Now, some people would argue that this shouldn't be that painful, but I think if it was my hip, I'd probably rather have as much as I can get. So it's, so it's just the morphine with no local, and it's the local that would give him the wobbly legs. So, you know, we want to keep him as comfortable as we possibly can do. The thing about Leo's hip replacement is he's tiny. There's very little room for error here. So the adrenaline right now is 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 pumping. X-rays. Take him. The smallest one that they make, which is what we've got, is ten, and that measures ten. So. It's a bit of a no-brainer in terms of selection of implant size, as, as expected given these two kilos. It, it's, it's the smallest one they make, and he's right on the edge, right on the edge. Like I said, they measure, this measures 10, it's 10 millimetres. It's going to be on the wire. Right, we're going in. Leo's 2.7 kilograms. Smaller dogs have been done, um, but it's the socket that's the issue really more than the stem because you could potentially doctor the implant a little bit with the stem, but not with the socket. So um, that's, that's, my, that's my big worry, is can we get a 10 millimeter implant into a 10 millimeter piece of bone with some cement at the same time? 11 scalpel. You straight? Yeah, okay, right, so we're off. It's not going to be very far in on this titchy little thing. So there you go. That's what we've cut off. So we've taken the femoral head and a little bit of the femoral neck here as well. The new femoral head looks a bit smaller. So this is, this is grossly misshapen. It's almost went from a circle, which would have been a similar size to that. It's kind of kind of shortened and flattened and kind of splurged out a little. It looks more like looks more like a mushroom. If 
flush and suction. For this doll, because it's so, so small and so delicate, we aren't going to be putting any reamers on power tools and press and go, because within half a second, you could have no bone left. So that's, that's not what we're going to do here. What we are going to do is we're going to use a little, a little spinal burr. And we're going to use that a bit like a paintbrush and just remove the bone bit by bit by bit by bit. And just keep on seeing if our little trial 10 millimeter implant will fit. And as soon as it fits, then we're good to go. Ooh, it's tight. It's really, really tight. So we've just got to be very, very careful. The worry is, is we might run out of bone. If, if we go right the way to the sides, that's game over. This has to fit fairly soon, otherwise I'm not quite sure. We can file down the stem, but there's not really an awful lot you can do about the cup. There's no room for error. So if I remove not enough, it ain't gonna fit. If I remove too much, well, there's, no, there's nothing for it to grip. It's important that I don't go through right the way through and out the other side. Yeah, it's getting really, it's like wafer thin now. I can't go any further, otherwise I'm gonna go through. So that's, that's it, that's as far as we can go. Right, let's get the cement mixed. Go, 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 go. So Claire, you need to get around here. We've just gotta now cement this thing in. So I just gotta go for it now and hope it's good. Okay, so someone just count kind of 10 minutes. I'll start the watch. If I move now as the cement starts to set, we're gonna lose some of the bonding that we've got. But I think that looks from here quite good. Right. That's the socket there. Don't drop it. If I move now as the cement starts to set, we're going to lose some of the bonding that we've got. But I think that looks from here quite good. Right. We're basically trying to make a hole inside the bone for this to fit with a little bit of cement around it. I can see this thing moving around inside the bone. Wow, that is getting really thin. If we go too far, we break the bone and we're a lot worse off than we were before we started. So yeah, that's a real kind of uh, edgy seat time. Oh, not quite. Tight. Do you know what? I need another millimetre. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> this is so, so tight. <laughs> so but basically what I'm doing, I, I, I just keep putting this thing back in because if this thing fits, okay. we're good. And I think that actually good. is pretty good. We've got this implant now to fit, so this is it. We're just gonna now cement this thing in. There's actually a very small window of when that cement is easy to work with and actually gonna be effective to use. That you've gotta put it in there and get your implant in, and then once you're happy, you've got to just stay put. Because if you start moving around as the cement starts to set, you're just going to debond the thing from the cement and it's just not going to work. Very, 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 very careful. <laughs> right. So this is the actual implant. In she goes. And I need to just try and make sure that that is lined up. She's in. She's in. The fact that she's in is good. Is pretty damn good, I have to say. <laughs> Whew. That I think is probably one of the fiddliest stops I've ever done. 
And that feels pretty good. Let's go x-ray, see what it's like. This is now the, the really stressful way for orthopaedic surgeons because there's, there's no hiding place on the x-rays, you know. I mean, worst case scenario, this hip might have popped out. That would be a total disaster and I'll be, I'll be crying. We need to get one of those. X-rays. Fingers crossed. This view here is for us to assess the way that the stem sits in the middle of the femur and it's, it's, it's really good, it's really good. Uh, it's in the middle, it's in for a start, so that makes me happy. Yeah, happy with that. Oh, he's been such a brave little fella. I've got you a lovely soft bed for the night. There we go, he's so good. There we go. He's a good boy. Oh, it's all right. There's a good lad. There's a good boy. One attempted jump onto the bed and, you know, that hip could be not where it should be and would be quite easy to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory here. You've got a new hip, mate. You're really lucky. Hey, he's a good boy. Hey, Maya, where's your friend Leo? Yeah. Where is he? Yeah. There he is. Yeah. There he is, look, your little friend. Come on, you. One, two, three. Oh. There we go, look. It's a bit of a one-off, to be honest with you, but um, he's the smallest hip replacement that we've done, and um, I, I just wanted to really, really keep a close eye on him in the, in, for the first couple of days. Look, it's your little friend. Oh, gently. Ah, oh. ah, oh. gently, gently. My God, two babies to look after at the same time, crikey. He's had a major operation and he's got better extension and is less painful than he was pre-op already. So, you know, I'm really pleased. Can I say hello to Maya? There we go. Are you going to miss him when he goes home? Are you going to miss him? Oh. Right, off we go. Right then, one baby in. Baby to go. Again. Yeah. Chocolate baby. There you go. Mm. I had to bribe her with chocolate. Oh. She was getting tired. Has she been all right? Yeah, she's good. Does she like Leo? Mm. She loves Leo. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Come on then, you little one. Mm. Oh, good girl. Oh, that's a bit more like Could it. Could you help him with fight. Leo? OK. See you later, Maya. I'll see you later. Excuse me. Hello, hello Michael. Sir. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. Oh, hello. Okay, here he is. Here hello. He is. Can I? Can I? Sorry. Easy oh, does it. Easy come. does it. There we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's missed yeah. you. <laughs> this morning at seven o'clock, I was awake and waiting for the time to come here. <laughs> I miss you so much, my little one. Yeah, you're going home now. So he's been at our house the last two nights. You know, he's been getting wet on hand and foot. Anderson walks in and it's literally just, uh, I'll see you later. It's quite funny. The most important thing is rest. Okay. And we don't want to be charging around off lead because if he does that, potentially things can move around and we can get a problem. Uh, if he's good at six weeks, I'll be pretty happy. And then as his exercise increases and he's off lead at 12 weeks and I get a video of him flying around off lead, then, I, then I'll relax. Okay, All the man. best. Okay, you take care. Man. Take it easy. <laughs> See you, Leo. Let's see Daddy and Isabella. Yeah, they are waiting for you.
Yeah, they are waiting for you, my little. Let's go home. See, Isabella, where are you? I first met Astro when the RSPCA were looking to foster cats out, so I said, that's great for me. I wasn't sure whether I was going back to Australia and it would be ideal. So what's going on today? What's going on today, for goodness sake? I went to meet him and he crawled up onto my lap and I said, well, you're the one. Straight away, he made himself at home. It was as if he'd lived here all his life. Astro was gorgeous straight from the start. You gonna go and see Scott? You gonna go and see Scott? Hey? I think Astro has a massive sense of entitlement when it comes to old Isa Worth. He thinks he owns the place. Astro! He goes to the pub. How's Astro today? He's good. <laughs> you come in for a drink? What would you like? Saucer of milk for the cat. <laughs> <laughs> he gets on buses. He normally walks all the way down to the supermarket and he just thought, I'll catch the bus. And he sat on the priority seats for the elderly. Good boy. He's a good boy today. So he goes and checks out the barber shop. Astro! He is extraordinary. I think this guy needs a key to the city. You don't get a haircut today. Astro, come on. Astro, come off that sofa, please. Come on, come on, babes, come on. Astro, come on, you don't live here. I've had cats all my life, but I've never had one like him. He loves to go to other people's houses, and inevitably I get a phone call saying, your cat is in my house. And this has happened all over Isleworth, and people just fell in love with him. It's ever so strange. Get on the bus. Despite the fact that Astro seems to be getting around Eliza perfectly well, he does have some issues that I'm concerned about. Astro, come on. His eye has got some issues and it has had a lot of Come on. In you come. Good boy. Hi. Come on. Hey, Astro. Good boy. Hello, Hello. buddy. Hello, mate. How's it going? You've been a good boy. Hey, you're having a lovely day. Whenever we see cats coming into the practice, they come in a cat basket. Sometimes, but rarely, they come in people's arms, but never do they stroll in by choice on their own. He's so unusual. I heard he gets the bus. He does. I hear a new story about him every time she comes in. <laughs> He's famous. He's very famous. Famous in Isleworth. <laughs> come in and see Scott. He's not that bad. Come on, mate. In you come. You know where it come is. Come on, Astro. Come on then, this way. <laughs> Every time Astro comes into the practice, you can't help but smile. This is an extraordinary cat. Good boy. So look, I haven't seen him for a little while, and I must say his eye isn't looking that no, great he... today, is it? Definitely has changed a little bit. It weeps on and off, and yeah. that white bit has got larger. And one thing I noticed is he can't see very far away. Like if I go out of view, yeah. like, you know, maybe 20 feet, mm -hmm. he can't see me, mm -hmm. I don't think. And then I have to come closer yeah. and then he recognises that I'm there. Yeah, it definitely has changed a little bit. So Astro has had cat flu all his life, which is basically a herpes virus. And every now and again, when he's stressed, it comes out causing injury to the surface of the eye, the cornea, and he gets corneal ulcers. These are chronic and ongoing, and as a result, his eye is scarred, and so that does mean it makes it more and more difficult for him to be able to see out of his eye. And he's now how old? I think he's about 13. Yeah, and he's obviously had herpes since a kitten. Yeah, because he's had so, lots of flare-ups. Yeah, so that's 13 Mystery. years of flare-ups, 13 yeah. years of damage on that eye. Yeah. So first of all, just put a little bit of local anaesthetic into the eye just to make boy? proceedings a little bit more comfortable. Hey buddy, hey? Eh? Good boy. Good boy. Oh, I, know. I know, I know. I know, it's tough, isn't I it? It's only Come a couple on. weeks before. Oh, okay. it's I know. Come on. You're stood Come up on. today. You are, aren't you? Mm. Oh, I know. Good boy. 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 Good bo
poor eyes. It's all right, aren't you? That little green dot there. Can you see that, Louise? Right in the center of the eye. Oh, yes. So yeah. unfortunately, there is another ulcer present. Oh, that's so, good. yet again, more scar tissue for this poor oh. eye. The concern I've got is that the changes that I can see on the surface of his eye might actually impede his independence. This cat needs to have 20 20 vision to be able to get around, and I'm really concerned that it's deteriorating of late. The eye is far from normal. Far from normal. Oh, Astro, you've got herpes. Well, Mummy, don't say it so loudly, hey? We don't want all the neighbours oh, to hear, Astro. do we? They won't let you in anymore. Oh, babes. Astro's my little mate. He's adorable. I'd do anything for him. Yeah, he's a little treasure. So I'm worried something could be wrong with his vision. I'd hate him to have to lose his eye. Astro, what are we going to do if you can't go out? Hey? Today on examination of Astro's eyes, I can see that he has got some ulcers again, bless him, which are a little bit sore and of concern. Right now, I'm really worried that he could actually lose his sight. He's got a huge amount of attachments from the iris to the lens and that is completely abnormal. So okay. it's hard to know if that's because of this herpes virus or not. I'm worried about Astro's eye and worried about what life he will have if he loses his eye. He loves to go out and wander. I don't want anything to hamper that. It's a good boy, hey? I think Astro would be miserable if he was confined to the flat because he loves to explore and he's got a big life and a big wide world out there that he loves to go out and see. Louise, I know how much you love this cat and how much he means to you. Yeah. Um, I mean, this cat really is one in a million. He is so special and uh, he just deserves the best of care. We need to ensure that this guy keeps doing the extraordinary things that he does. The good news I can deliver is, with the right management and time, we'll get on top of this corneal ulcer like we yeah. have before. But it is looking more and more abnormal. But I'm just really concerned that if his vision continues to deteriorate, it makes it more and more difficult for him to keep himself safe. Do you think he can see out of it? He can. You know what it'd be like? It would be like if you got your glasses, you took mm. them off, you went, ah, and you put them back on again. Oh, so it's it's like looking through a mist. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we can treat that, that's fine. We'll continue to do that. Yeah. The good news is, is that there is light getting into the back of the eye. Mm -hmm. He loves life, he loves it. So mm -hmm. I'd like to see him have it at its best. Well, let's go and please. get the best for you, shall please we? Get me fixed. Should we get the best for you? So I'm not quite speaking to you yet, no. Scott. <laughs> Almost. You're a bit mad at me, aren't you? Yeah. Hmm? You're a bit mad. I couldn't believe it that even after a really long consult where I was annoying him and putting dye in his eye, that he still wanted to give me a bit of affection. He wanted to rub heads with me while sitting on the waist scales. It might have looked like he was butting heads with me. He wasn't. This is definitely all bromance. And I can totally understand why everyone in Isleworth has totally fallen in love with this cat. Treating Astro is always fantastic fun and at the end of doing it he was a perfect gentleman uh, he sort of tipped his cap to me and then just decided to jump off the table and then saunter out of the clinic. Astro! Good boy! Boy! Alright mate! You ready to go home now? You wanna go home now? Torch is over! Hey, you wanna go Come on the dog on. scales instead? Come on! Astro is a totally awesome cat and for now our intrepid explorer can continue to enjoy his jaunts around Isleworth. Long may he reign. It's going to be our new window display. Yep. <laughs> and what would you like to drink today, huh? Milkshake, milk. maybe? <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice cocktail. <laughs> what do you reckon? Prawn cocktail. Prawn cocktail crisps, yeah. Scampi fries, yeah. There we go. I think he does, I think he's sharing himself, he's sharing the love with the whole neighbourhood. Everybody that knows him, loves him. So that's it for the day. Yeah. <laughs> Just comes in from Mosey. As long as the cat doesn't like. creep down in the night and help himself to my beer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, he might actually. You like a drink, don't you Astro? 
I'm looking after him. He looks after me. He's great company. He's just adorable. He means the world to me. I think perhaps it's destiny that maybe Astro and I are together. It's, it's, it's not the thing you see every day, is it? Cats walking around in pubs. That's, that's what he does. <laughs> that's true. On another planet. Yeah. <laughs>